passengers, etc. Thinking you have as much as you could, you split up to go talk to the ex guards. Uh, talk to them, Clarick and Christopher, headed to the singing swan. Not knowing what the guards looked like, y'all decided to play some music to get a reaction. Intimidated your way onto stage and started to improvise bagpipe jam session. Carrick is immediately able to find your quarry by sheer awkwardness. Um, you talk to the group and learn some good info. Uh, found out that about what was protected, um, especially that the Silver Fingers, who are trying to steal a tiara, lots of traps in the place, got a map of it, uh, and there, that there was an art gallery that has traps of fire. Felix and Thel headed to the Whistle Pig, uh, bought your way into a card game with uh, Tarolga and company. Although you didn't win, you seem to be big enough marks to get cash. They let you stay and play. Learn that Vitorant is out of town while Merith is here. Learn that nine guards control the vault, two always on the balcony, two at the front gate. Um, Learn more about the Silver Hand, being a bunch of rich people that hire others to try and steal from each other. Learned about the trapped rug in the library and the password to get by it. It's quixotic. Learned about a secret entrance in the southwest corner and ended up buying the guards' uniforms off them for 200 gold pieces available tomorrow. Um, so another prep you did. Uh, Christopher got one last guard disguised from a quite reluctant seamstress. That looked close enough. Prepared a letter saying you were from the Silver Fingers. Giannis gave you an Xerox device to copy any documents if you find anything incriminating. From the vault, uh, <clears throat> I guess, beginning the heist, uh, Carrick went invisible. Uh, you executed Operation Ruin Jerry's Life. <laughs> Carrick tripped him by laying on the ground, aged him eight years, burnt him, knocked him out before dragging him as an imposter to the lobby guards. Christopher threw out a great ball, resulting in a dire wolf running through the streets, convinced most of the front guards to pursue the thieves. Uh, Felix headed through the main entrance lobby and break room, sending off some of the guards to help met with the others who made it through the secret entrance, escaped without triggering any traps or taking any gems after Christopher noticed a large uh, clean spot in the gem room. In the potion and scroll room, you fucked this place up, dropping acid all over the place. You're able to talk a guard down that they were just new guys and he was too hungover to notice them have come in. Uh, took some scrolls in the chaos and left replacement blank parchment. Uh, safe room, you decided you didn't have time. Uh, art room, all safely made it through into the room without triggering the trap. Guard came in, but you were able to talk him off and get the trap disarmed. Armor and weapons room, notice a suit of armor were animated, but with your disguises, were able to have them bar the door for a bit. Notice the magic armor and weapons, but left them behind, head to the next room. The zoo, uh, you found a room full of giant lizards, some rodents, and two displacer beasts. Carrick tried to unlock the giant lizard cages, but failed wildly, continued on to the library. A li in the library, all of you immediately shouted the passphrase, made it through there quickly, leaving behind some valuable books. Uh, then the next room, uh, Felix fell through an illusory bridge and nearly died on some poison spikes. Everyone else made it over, although it was close with magic buffeting your jumps. Let's see, you all head up the spiral staircase and come to the second floor. And that is where we are at. Um, anything else I missed? I just got so. present. Jerry seems to have been with all his colleagues. Like everybody seems to have liked him. So, oh, it's Jerry. Hey, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, guys, you guys ruined a nice dude's life. So I'll pull you up to the top of the stairs. Oh my goodness, a computer that can move at a non-glacial pace. That was the fastest I've ever been able to move anyone. What were you using before? An old MacBook Air, right? Yeah, an old MacBook, like 2016 MacBook Air. Yeah, nice. Which is, it's still fine for anything that doesn't require any amount of processing. Although, uh, Roll20 is starting their uh, beta of Jumpgate, which is their like complete redo of their entire backend to make it work on 
old computers. Make it better, so, faster. I'll be interested. I want to join the beta, but I didn't want to do it on this game because it might be totally fucked. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, you guys come to the top of uh, the spiral staircase. Um, let me just get to the right page. Um, there's, you don't hear test, or test. any guards test, test. controlling this area. Test complete. Huh? Uh, TJ said test, test. I said I was test just making complete. sure it was working. Oh. Okay. <laughs> right input, right mic, you know, all the things. <laughs> yeah, just switch them all up. Um, yes, you are uh, up here. So go ahead and what do you guys want to do? I think we just got to keep moving. Yeah, uh, you would know, like, this is uh, the part of your map that is just a bunch of question marks. Can I creep around and, like, peek around the corner? Just... Yeah, go ahead and make a stealth check. Sure. And I'm I would say feet. you guys have been here for probably about a half an hour moving through all the rooms. So uh, Felix's disguise, you're I, if, actually with everything, you're probably sitting at, like, 45 minutes. So you only have probably about another 15 minutes of your disguise self still running. So hmm? I think more. No. you are invisible. Okay, cool. <laughs> that means I can turn the corner. Yes, you 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 can. <laughs> a, it's a long path, dudes. <laughs> I think we're good. Yeah. So uh, you see a door at the end of the hallway. Um, uh, like. I would say, like, because you got that natural 20, you would kind of know, um, like, layout-wise that getting to the end, um, especially want to start being quiet because that's where the balcony would be. Um, the not door? on the other side of the door, but what, kind like, of, like, to your right would okay. be the balcony. Uh, and so it's just... Um, and, yeah, with that, no one else needs to make a stealth check to move around quietly up here um you all kind of know what's um what's going on uh you would know that the that door that you're just at leads to the veterans chambers and then down the other hallway probably leads to whatever the question marks are could you like the map again like the overall map because i don't know if i have it it's in the um, in the, the uh, what you call yeah, the very like, bottom of the list okay, of cool. characters. Yeah, right, 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 right. Okay, so um, so they're uh, if I remember correctly, they're not allowed into the doorway, right? They have to go up and down the the ladder. Yeah, they go up and down on the balcony. They are not allowed in the room itself. But, but nobody, uh, well, we don't know that nobody's in there. Okay, so we can go through the door, or we can go down and go to those other rooms. What do you guys want to do? Um, question marks first, and then out Vitorant space, and out the balcony, or maybe? That's that's kind of what I'm feeling. Okay. Kind of fill out question marks first. Let's do that. Sounds good. This is another long hallway. Yeah, and it is kind of interesting. You haven't seen any guards up in here. So, okay, so through this hallway, it looks like there's two doors, one on the left and one on the right. So one to the... Which one do we want to go first? I just lightly uh, just kind of run my fingers down the walls, too, just to feel in for anything hidden. Yeah, make a, um, make a perception check as you do that. See if yeah. you notice anything. If he trips any Indiana Jones style traps, traps, and I lose my head, I'm mad about this. Yeah, with an eighteen going down there, they just seem like regular walls, not um, nothing in particular. They're very sturdy, very. This is not like the like castle that you are in where you could break them down, but just a you know well made. Um, nothing in particular here. But uh, you do get like with an 18, you do would think like that's probably a good idea, seeing as how there were other secret entrances around there, you know, might be other things 
like that, so keep that in your back pocket. So, so where to? Left or right? Eeny, meeny, my mo. Um, can I use detect magic? Yeah. I'm going to use my hat so it's instantaneous. Okay. Um, wait, your hat allows you to call, cast detect magic? My or hat allows allow me to cast any cantrip. Detect oh, magic is not a cantrip. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> well, then in that case, I will uh, do nothing. Never mind. <laughs> do you not have it prepared? It's not prepared, no. Uh, okay. So, no, you cannot do that. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there, there are just two doors there. We just flip a coin. Heads is left and tails is right. D2. Do it. All right. One is uh, left and... 1d2. Heads is left. No! 1d2. Will that work? There we go. All right, left. <clears throat> okay. okay. Let's go in. Um, this room <laughs> contains four large metal cabinets. Do any of them look like they've been rustled or opened and closed recently um or do they all look unperturbed it's the dust level in this room <laughs> yeah, hanging out it. here in the doorway just kind of half in half out uh just watching the back um let's see so actually this is where this is where i changed this adventure yeah. Um, there are none of these in here. Oh. What's inside of here right now is a looks kind of like a war room has been set up with boards, papers, etc., spelling out the next week's plans. Or you wouldn't know that, but it's kind of like desks with some papers, a board <laughs> with like, like, yeah, just like think a war room, like a map oh. kind of marks on it. Um, yeah, but much of it, um, like just that word, quick glance, is not immediately readable. Um, not readable in that it's like not a language we understand. No, it's more. It is in. Uh, I just make a make a. Um, I would allow two people to make intelligence checks as you were looking at it. I got a plus three, so gross. Let's see, 18. Oh, thank goodness. Um, I'm just going uh, over here. I mean, it makes sense that you do this. This is, um, I feel like uh, you know, it's, it's like Thieves Camp, but it's almost like a cipher on top of it. You can slowly kind of figure it out as you're looking at it, but each, like, pretty much everything is written in this a cipher that, um, you know, if you want to spend a long time doing it, you can kind of parse everything out, but uh, you definitely can like get like the sparked notes of it. But reading through it would take some time. Um, however, how you, did our you... fax machine functionality work again? I don't remember. <laughs> um, let's see. There was a so limited number of pages we could copy with it, correct? Yes. So yeah, that's um, right. What was the the Xerox I machine? Down. I wrote that down here. Yeah, I have. Where did you go last session? It's quarterly fifth. I think it's only it makes used... a copy of any paper. Three charges daily. It takes one minute to use and can copy up to three things. Yes, and then you can put magic into it to do other things. Yeah. Why? Well, um... So this is all up on like a board. Like, is there anything? It's on board, like... and there's like a table with things. Oh yeah, three charges. If you, depending on how much you spend, um, you can get a time stamp if you use up to a level two spell, a location stamp up to a level if you use a level three spell, and speed it up uh, with a level one spell. Where it would take it, it would instead of a minute, it would take 
you know, 10 seconds. I think we could spare a minute. I guess the question is like, is there, I, I want to know what the most important thing to copy is or what looks the most important. But yeah, yes. so let's use this and, and make a copy. Yeah, um, so looking through this, uh, you see there's a like a bunch of um, like we'll just go with that 18 investigation or intelligence that you did. Um, we'll actually go ahead and make an investigation check on top of that. Eight, the 18 was to see if you could actually read anything on here. I'll let two people do this as well. 21 is going to probably do it, but if someone else wants to. I think it's an at 20. Negatory. Terror's rolling my shit. Yeah. I'm getting him out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, kind of like rifling through here, um, <clears throat> you find a, a list of a bunch of names um, kind of from different parts of the city, different uh, cities around, um, especially Kamorda and Theostock. Um, and it looks like it's um, kind of the uh, blackmail on people that have ties to um, the the myriad that um, and it's like a whole lot of the middlemen in the in the business kind of um, some blackmail there like lists of people that they can squeeze to kind of throw their support behind Merith. Uh, you find um, uh, some forged document. Uh, this is probably the, the the most interesting thing you find is there's forged documents that slash letters about Ophelia actually making a grab for power to get the city under new management using the five guys as the hammer to take out the gentleman. Has letters between you all and Ophelia in a very, very good forgery. Um, and you would notice that using the name of the five guys as a whole as dates don't quite line up when you guys aren't technically those people anymore. So okay. um, if you guys probably spent, that's like what you would get over like this first bit. If you wanted to, there's tons of stuff here. It would take it would take a good amount of time to really um, figure anything out or or get ascertain everything and find out what's most important. But those are the two most important things you see. So, so can we take? Uh, well, man, if uh, should we copy any of this with a timestamp or any anything that is important here, or do we think just? The letters are good enough. I don't know yeah. what the timestamp is in this situation. Like the only thing I could think, like the timestamp is like when the letter was written. I imagine like it, it tells us when that happened. Like is that what that means? Um, yeah, yeah. You would know. Like it would, it would magically decide decipher when when this was done. Like the only I, like the only thing that would give us would be like well we would have an alibi for this date or, or whatever. Yeah, it would mm -hmm. it would have a mismatch between the event dates that are forged and the actual when it was written. So you, you could clearly tell it was a forgery. Maybe that is a good idea then. That was a level what spell? Two. 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 And the three gives us where they forged it. So the right? three would give you where you got this. How? We just is, okay. So is the date the the date is the date it was authored, not the date we copy it. Is that yes? Okay. But the the um the location is like where this document was found. Okay, so I, I, if I know I we... use a level three spell. Do I get all the things under it? Do I have to use a level three and a level two and a level one? Yes. Like, Oh, gross. Oh, ick, yeah. Oh. Ew. <laughs> um, the last time we... Well, but Saxon, Saxon tasked us with trying to find documents to kind of clear us, right? Was that... I'm trying to remember exactly. So, you're kind of just trying to find proof that 
something nefarious is going on um, to uh, um, <clears throat> like that's what you're doing. You're trying to find proof and if there is proof you know, notify somebody maybe that something bad might be happening. It does. It does. So it does seem like the date might be useful given the documents that are trying to implicate us and the time frame of when that would happen. But it also feels like the location would be beneficial to tie, tie it to these guys instead of just, there could be yeah. doubt, right? That it actually was yeah. their and document. That's, and that's like the big thing is you guys are nobodies to this group and you're, you know, trying to accuse someone very high up. All right. Well, let's just do the use the spell slots then. I, I mean, can I give think... up a, a slot too if we need. Yeah, I have a couple we could could burn. Um, I think the I think the big thing is whether or not we need to do the date for all of them or just for that specific letter, perhaps that that implicates us in some way with a time frame indicated, right? Yeah. <clears throat> we want to spend more time to get to go through everything more thoroughly, make sure we copy the right few things. It also sounds like, I, well, I mean, we'll probably get asked for an intelligence check or, or something on this, but it seems like there's enough documents here to, if a few were missing, they wouldn't immediately notice their disappearance. Obviously, we still want to copy some, and not steal everything, but if we could copy what's most important and maybe take a couple of others. Right, yeah, can I ask one more uh, question? Um, yeah, ask whatever I you have, want. I have Comprehend Languages as a spell. <clears throat> if mm -hmm. I cast it, would I be able to understand quickly everything written? Because uh, that, I, I get... You understand the literal meaning of any spoken language, you understand any written language, but you must be touching the surface. It takes about a minute to read one page of text. Now, here's where I'm asking is because the spell doesn't decode secret me messages in a text or a glyph, such as an arcane sigil. So that's why I'm asking, like, what is that? What would your I interpretation would, be? I would say um, it's not going to let you, like, it, it'll speed up everything. But, like, instead of it taking, like, five minutes to decode a, a page fully, you could probably do it in a minute. But it's not going to just, like, immediately you glance at it and know what's, right, right. what it is. So, um, I would say if you cast that, you could maybe get advantage on another check to find something else interesting. Like, is there anything specifically that you are looking for? No, because I, I don't know what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah. So may, maybe uh, it, it makes more sense just to go with the original plan of using a slot to help speed this up. Or yeah, so. So, yeah, you guys make a copy of that with a timestamp of when it was written. When it was written was um, about which you would know three weeks after um, after you returned to Shady Creek Run and Ophelia became uh, the head of her house. So about three months ago. M maybe more. I can't remember. I don't know the exact date but how many after, how many spell slots do we need to owe at the moment uh you need to owe a total did you want time and location yeah uh that would be a um two and a three slot. so, so basically up, uh, like a two and a three right a two and a three or a five <laughs> I can give up a, a level two. Okay. I'll give up a three, I guess. Okay. It's painful, but I'll do it. I, um, I could give up the three. Your threes in combat would be better than my threes in combat. So I'll, I could do a three. You sure? Yeah. I don't have any threes, so. Um, 
Christopher, are you doing anything as these guys? Because you hate reading. He's got the door, the man. Are you just watching the door? I'm watching. I'm kind of like half. I'm trying to like peek out. He's playing tic tac toe okay. by himself. <laughs> I'm giving up all my spell slots, so you just <laughs> play tic tac toe by himself and somehow loses. <laughs> just constantly in a draw. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. So. You have not noticed. Make a perception check, Christopher, just for your like watching out. Yeah, you have not um, heard anything coming up here. Um, sounds like your distraction downstairs has been pretty good. Um, though, yeah, you're probably after this. This is probably taken um another 10 minutes like your your this guy itself is like about to wear off there's no way you're going to get out of here by before it gets yeah that's it, it turns off um okay, so that's w one document we've copied then and we have two more yeah, theoretically one, i i if there's other things you want to copy but i'm saying like right now it's probably been about 10 almost 15 minutes yeah. of you guys looking through this um Actually, because of that, I need to do one more thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say you can make another copy of other documents or take things as you want. The other one that you really noticed was just a bunch of blackmail material. Yeah, I think it makes sense yeah, to copy that in. with the location so it pins it to here, this building. Yeah, and um, and you know, the, like the top name that you see is Vitterant is definitely a blackmail um, target in this regard. Um, so, kind of piecing together why they have this entire vault to themselves. So, yeah, you guys can make it that. So you have. You know, a document of these letters that are forged that you can kind of prove are forgeries and blackmail material. Um, if you want to spend, I would say, if you want to spend another five minutes, you could probably find maybe one other thing to copy. But we've come all this way; we might as well look, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. At this point, if you guys just want to spend another five minutes. Uh, looking, you can find something. So, unless anybody's spidey sense is tingling, um, Christopher, you still hasn't noticed anything. So, well, we got a whole other room to look at. Mm -hmm. True. Yep. Um. Yeah, up to you guys. I think we kind of came what we we were looking for in terms of like somebody's trying to to do something uh yeah should we should we check the other door Let's or like it. are we just gonna like take because we've got what we came for right so like we could just bail while we're ahead or we yeah. could do like we usually do and open all the doors yeah. why, would, the, why would we not do that the only I I'd say just you know because it is six weeks between games the last the one other part of your plan was to plant a letter that the silver fingers were here. That's right. We're looking right. for a tiara that we ha have not that, seen yet. Correct. That you could like just to plant it on somebody else in case because you you know you haven't made a huge ruckus, but you did like completely destroy uh, a room with acid. Okay, and there have been so I that's I mean, it's up to you. I leaving right now makes total sense, but that was the only other part of your plan okay. that you guys. Yeah, that way any any break in is presumed to not be us. Was, I, that was the objective. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's keep going then. Let's try the other door. Let's do it. <clears throat> okay. Who's 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 going first? <laughs> Yeah, Chris, Chris who, who wants to take it in the face is what that question means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just tiptoe like cartoonishly and try and open this door. 
Wiley Coyote. <laughs> Hold up. It's locked. <laughs> It's locked. All right, I'm gonna. I'm it gonna. Is pick. A, it is a. It is a large metal door that is locked. Or can I pick the lock? Yeah, go ahead and and try and pick the lock. Move back, though. Checking out this corner, then. What up? Do you want to do uh, sleight of hand or uh, no, thief tool? Thief tool. Thief tool that's what I thought. I just want to make sure. The dice are hot right now. The dice are hot. The please don't please do. don't let me enter a combat. <laughs> and then, because my dice roll like, will immediately yeah. fall off a few cliff. Yeah, it 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 opens. All right, now I'll come back. Go in. <laughs> After you. You know what's funny that it's you didn't even really roll that well on that. You rolled a nine, but you had a plus. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's my <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I have a lot of modifiers for that. So <laughs> yeah. Plus 11. Uh, so Christopher goes in. Okay, as you open the door, um, the room is marble floored, uh, marble flooring and ivory colored wallpaper with silver accents. The room contains seven glass cases, each enclosing a small item. Um, hold up. Um, but as you're also pushing open the door, as it gets about halfway open, you immediately take um, twenty three points of lightning damage as an electrical charge shoots through the doorknob into your hand. Ow. And as you as you see, there's a small tripwire that got pinged open as you open the door. But it looks like the trap has now been disarmed. <laughs> Imaginary bridges, tripwires, <laughs> you know. Yep, you know. I'm your calls are locked traps. Um, but yeah, inside this room, there are, as you can see, all these different cases. Um, each one has a note card written in elegant handwriting that bears the item's name and brief description. Does anything say tiara or whatever it is we're looking for? I mean, looking, doing a quick, um, quick glance, the one kind of like right here, um, is... Uh, a definite like tiara, and if you quickly read the um, the placard, it says the ruby diadem of El Erwin Belsador, owned by Queen Erwin Belsador, ancestor of Sam Pithith. Doesn't mean anything to you, but um, but yeah, it's a uh, each spire of this diadem is uh, studded with rubies. Is there any way to find out did what we, traps are in here? <laughs> did we have a replica, or we just had the letter to leave where we Just had the letter to leave. Okay. Yeah. What do you guys want to do? Is there a way to look for traps? Or more? Yeah. You oh. can... You can look for traps. <laughs> Is anybody um, better yeah. at looking for traps? I mean, I can use, I can investigate for traps, but I don't have anything specific. Yeah, same. We can do that, though. I, I'm going to specifically investigate this case looking for traps. Okay. Um, physical traps, magical traps, or what? what just anything? Both, if I can. I mean, if you okay. make me pick, I'll uh, pick. But yeah, make a make a perception check. Perception. I'll let one other person do this as well, or give him advantage. I have a, I have a plus five to perception. If I can give him advantage, 
Let's see if we get the 20. Go ahead and roll again, Ryan. <clears throat> no. No, <laughs> definitely not. But with the 16, um, you do notice um, a set of runes on all of the display cases. They all look very similar. Um, uh, um, on the case itself. So there, there's definitely some level of rune um, with a 16. You make an arcana check because you notice this. Let's see if you know what the runes are and since you are magically trained. Yeah, the uh, the runes are made out of like a small silver thread almost, and you would almost assure that this is um, connected to an alarm spell. That um, while you probably won't hear it, it will definitely be alerting uh, people that um, most likely the guards. So mm. there's definitely. My... That it is. It is um you you put together like this is definitely a magical trap that's set on here. Nothing mechanical, nothing that. Um does my uh previous knowledge of this give me any insight into how I it could like if it might be disarmed, like can mm -hmm. I like, if I mess with the runes, do I ruin the spell? Like, anything like that? Um, you... I mean, you don't... You think you probably could, but, you know, this is not... Like, Does anyone have... Uh, I don't have like, it. Does anyone like, have Dispel Magic or something on these runes? I sure on these do. Runes? I don't have it, but if we... Yeah, I would say your can... 16 would... would You would know <laughs> that you could, but... You there'd be a lot of risk in there, but dispel magic would for sure handle this. Cool. All right. Well, let's do that. Do you not have dispel magic, Ryan? I do, but he said he does as well. So <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm like I have it. And it's coming in coming ready. in clutch with his spells. Yeah, look at me. Uh yeah. Okay. Um, easy enough, you just kind of come up to it and, like, hold your little holy symbol and pulse out, and you watch the runes just, like, the silver, the silver thread, the shininess that he had noticed goes completely dull, so it just looks like iron bands, and you would think that the, the trap has been, this trap has been disabled. Just on one pedestal, not all of them, correct? <laughs> Uh yes, just on just on that single pedestal with the tiara. This uh, just got rid of the first rune. Uh, the, this got rid of the, the the all the runes oh. that you know of. Like, oh okay, cool. Yeah. What um, else is in here? Uh yeah, while you're they're doing that, you see there's a dual human skull. Um, unclear if genuine skull or replica found in an ancient tomb. It's coated in gold, large diamonds are mounted as eye sockets, and small rubies drip down mm -hmm. his cheekbones like bloody tears. Uh, there's the there's a map called the Lost Map of Tishinos. The card reads reportedly from Pirate Queen Shrexit Landier. No other records of Tishinos found. Must must mount expedition. Um, yeah, it's just a weathered map of an island that lies about a hundred miles from an unidentified coastline. There's a royal scepter. The card reads, used in the coronation of Queen Kalinia. Possible gift from Elven Court. Um, intricately engraved and set with diamonds and sapphires. There's a silver dagger. It says, used in the assassination of Chris Angren Shellstein. Non-magical. Dagger is unremarkable, but high quality. There's a snowy collar owned by legendary fortune teller Gachita Garrido. Dog reportedly told the future. Um, yeah, it's just a, a collar and, and diamond encrusted. And then there's the thesis of Mortensor. The card reads, owned by Mortensor, the famous necromancer, possibly contains secrets of longevity, but difficult to decipher. 
an oversized tome full of esoteric, archaic texts that would require extensive research to decipher. So. Can we X-Rox the uh, map? What? Can we x the map? Um, you could. You'd have to open up the case. Oh, is it, it was it all of them dispelled or just the tiara? No, no, just the just the box on the, just the tiara box. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Anybody want it? Or... <laughs> it? Dispel magic is a level three spell, um, so it just depends how how much we want it. With the map, mm -hmm. you could Xerox the map. <laughs> I, you have one more Xerox left. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we go ahead and Xerox the map. Why not? Well, we, we have to, to dispel uh, the rune first, and then yeah, we'd have to take it. It'll cost a. Well, it's in a it's in a like a glass case. Yeah, it, everything in here is in the same cases. Okay, so I guess uh, I can't remember. I have it written down. I think you have to actually be physically touching it. Yeah, you would have to like pick it up and run it through the machine. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let Christopher uh, <laughs> make the decision. I I don't want to make that. Yeah, I don't know. Do it. Is is it worth the level three? Basically, <laughs> that's the. I mean, that's that's up to us. I mean, like, how intrigued are you? If you're intrigued enough, then what's what's it say? like? What what's the inscription? Give any clue about what's there or it is a reportedly was owned by a pirate queen there's no other records of this island must mount expedition and we don't even know where it is right yeah you don't even it's it's a it's a island a hundred miles off an unknown coastline in a world that you don't know <laughs> so. yeah no i think we're good no, thanks, <laughs> okay uh, so yeah, there's the the diadem case. What are you guys doing? Okay, so we got the thing open. <clears throat> I'll be right back. Sorry, but we don't necessarily know. Does it? Did we see any other like when you detected magic? I, I maybe I didn't hear, but was that only on the? Uh, you only got the first like the rune on the alarm, on the case. So so yeah, what I detected was um, the runes that were on all the cases which is indicative of the alarm so okay. all of the cases had the same runes and due to the silver threading i could tell that it was an alarm spell okay um, i got i didn't get anything else out okay. of that. so we don't necessarily know that this isn't trapped as well not necessarily i didn't detect it so it depend. it just depends on how it's, Scott, me. I think he said there is, there. You can tell there's no mechanical traps, is what I think he said. Right. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. That it was just the the magical one that I okay. detected. I mean, like I assumed based on his wording that that was the only trap, but he could be mean about it and be like, <laughs> "Here's a different one," you know. Okay, I'm cool with like. We can Indiana Jones it with the uh with the letter. Cool. Who wrote this letter again? I don't even remember. I think it was what's his bucket? Dionis maybe wrote it. I don't remember. I'm just gonna figure out how the hell we're gonna get out of here. I mean, assuming, like, well, what I assume the intended flow was, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily a good idea, <laughs> is that we're going to go through Vladimir, or whatever his name's room, and then hop off the balcony. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Uh, but, like, I don't... There might be guards out what, there. Yeah, who, who knows what's going on in this room we haven't gone in yet. That's true. It's too bad Meredith's not there. We can just kill him. And, you know. Oh, we don't know what happened. He might be in there. Who knows? I, I think he left, though, right? 
I don't remember. Do, do we know for sure that he left? I think so because the whole cart situation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we we came we went at night after he left. We could stow ourselves in there and jump him in the morning if we wanted to get real frisky <laughs> with it, but I mean, Carrick's always down for a little murder. <laughs> Oh, you know. What you guys doing? I think we're in Indiana Jones. Who wrote the letter? Do you remember? Was it was it Giannis who gave us this letter or something? No, um, Fell wrote the letter. Fell wrote the letter. Okay, cool. Uh, or Fell had the idea to write the letter. So maybe Fell should Indiana Jones it. Uh, he, no. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna break something. Okay, well I can like I have sleight of hand. I have a really good sleight of hand. Yeah, I you can, I can you do that. Yeah, you do it. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Here we go. We're gonna try to Indiana Jones it. Okay. So twenty seven. Yeah, you Indiana Jones it. <laughs> Great. Nothing. I nothing that you. There's no real like uh, idea if you, you even needed to have done it, but um. Yep, you have. You have it. Oh. Uh, so we've we've completed our goals now, right? Now we gotta so get out of here. Let's figure a way out of here. Okay. Which way are you going? I'm gonna put this in the the bag of holding so that it's like at least out of our yeah direct possession. All right, I, does it worth going through Vitorant space to try to go out the balcony or go back to? Well, the, the other thing? option is to go back down and try and find like a window to climb out of, and I don't remember the first floor of where there were windows. I don't, I don't know. I mean, we could try to get to the secret uh, door make in the a, back. Someone, someone, make an intelligence check. Let's see if you remember something. Uh, should I? Does anyone have yeah, better? I have plus three. I've been rolling like shit, but I have... No, you're oh. due. You're due. <laughs> yep, that's how that's how luck works. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you you don't remember anything about the outside of this building, Derek. <laughs> All I remember is beating Where am the I? shit out of somebody. <laughs> how did I get here? I, I blacked out. <laughs> um <laughs> He got, like kicked in the head while he was lying on the ground. <laughs> uh, at this at this point, Felix, your disguise is gone. <clears throat> okay. For sure. Uh yeah. So right, going well, down doesn't seem like the best. I... Well, I I mean, so we okay, so before we came up, uh we did we end up unlocking an animal or not? I can't we attempted uh, to no. and it, I don't think it worked it out. It failed, yeah. <laughs> okay. You gave you uh <laughs> Eric tried to use a dagger to do it and got like a one. Right, right. Uh, so, but before that, we did set up those guard dudes to like beat the shit out of anybody that came into that room. They uh just blocked the door. Okay. Not to yeah, it wasn't like okay. aggressive. It was oh they so the door. <laughs> so all of the guards that chased our stuff that could be coming back will all be directly outside below the balcony. <laughs> Potential. Well, that's, I mean, uh, maybe. Wait a minute. Uh oh. We don't know. It sounds like a really good use of some sort of AOE damage spell. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're trying to hey, get away you know stealthily, but let's just sinkhole them. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that's that's a good point. We could just you know blast our way out and. <laughs> so what was hey, you guys do not way? know what what uh what the inside of Vinran's room looks like. No, we sure yes. don't. So, uh, supposedly, I, it's these silver thieves, but, you know, this freely identifying black, like, sinkhole black hole that we know this <laughs> other group has probably used in combat before. Not identifying in any way at all. <laughs> well, I'm not suggesting we leave anyone alive to tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a city! There's gonna be witnesses! What are you, gonna murder the... Middle of the night. You're gonna murder the whole city block? <laughs> Alright, should we just go to the, the this quarters room? Let's at least I, I check like out Vitoret space, yeah. Okay, we're, we're not going downstairs. <laughs> Alright, who wants to open this door? 
Uh. <laughs> uh. Well, well, paper scissors. I'm gonna end up stabbing someone at some point. I will attempt to open the door. I do a cursory. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it opens it opens normal and <clears throat> inside you see the north half of these luxurious living quarters holds a study area with a fine desk and two beautiful paintings of night festivals a delicate curtain opens to the south revealing a sleeping area the bed is piled high with sumptuous linens the area also holds a sturdy wooden wardrobe and a privy oh my god i have to go to the bathroom <laughs> it's gonna take a shit. <laughs> leave, leave, a, leave another letter. Are these just that we can pull back the curtain and see more yeah, at once? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there's a wardrobe. There's that desk there. Um, oh, the shit. doors, what you assume to the balcony, are. Um... Does it look? At there's first a window. Glance? that uh meredith has been in here at all or was it um, everything it, he'd do in that one room you think uh it does uh, this looks like this room hasn't been touched in a bit okay there's like still like maybe like a glass of almost finished wine on the desk okay cool. um it's gonna be fully finished just <laughs> Just Take finish the line. It is it has gone quite acidic. Make a constitution check. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um however, um uh, as you guys start walking through there, um you do hear a knock 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 on the balcony door and who's in there? You know we can't go into Vitoran's quarters. Um. Wait, isn't this where the bathroom is? <laughs> Somebody told me this is the privy. Oh God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Make a deception check with disadvantage. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. That's how bad I am at it. <laughs> You hear, you better get out of there. And then you hear kind of someone on the outside kind of yell something you can't totally understand, but it sounds like they're yelling down off the balcony. Take it uh, up with Jerry. He told us it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, this ship has sailed. You don't know what happened, but the, it sounds like uh, some guards have been alerted to your presence. To so what's going present. on? What's what's going on with this window here? Um, yeah, the window. Can we get out of this window. We have we have one more photo. I just want to say before we do anything like yeeting out of a window, we have one more photocopy, and there's a desk we should probably just at least look at. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. As far as the windows go, Yeah, it looks like window. It looks like it's locked. Um, you can do whatever you want with the window. As far as the desk, um, you're thinking of this. Uh, so you make the roll to examine the desk. Uh, uh, fell. Investigation or perception? Mm -hmm. uh, investigation. Uh, a nine. Um, you don't find any. Um, you don't find anything really of of note immediately from searching through the desk. Uh, just yeah, this isn't your this isn't your ballywick. So you just like well, there's there's drawers and stuff, and you open them. One of them's locked, but the other ones just have like some paper in it. So. You don't, you don't, you don't see anything immediate. Um, yeah. What do you want to do with the window? 
Or are you doing anything with the what's window? Our, what's our like uh, grappling hook crossbow situation? I still have it. And like, how far is the next building? Um, it is about fifteen uh, feet away. Oh, we don't even need it. I'll just jump over there. <laughs> <laughs> so if Eric... we definitely needs it, if we're gonna be climbing across oh, yeah. an alley to gonna... another building, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you, I'm you gonna can carry it some... across a rope across. <laughs> I just can't jump. Yeah, yep, but, that's it. Um, uh, so if we are looking at using this window, I want to suggest that I cast arcane lock on these two doors so they can't come in behind us. Go with that. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So I'll cast arcane lock on both of them. So I'll use two spell slots. Um, and uh, let's see, I can designate a lot of different things about this spell. Um, I'm, I'm going to designate that, uh, if we speak the password, which is, God damn it, fucking open the door, um, <laughs> that the, the password will be suppressed, the, the spell will be suppressed for one minute, so if we actually need to get out of it, we can, and then, um, can I designate a time... It's kind of here. I'm gonna cast this to chat. Uh, what I would like to do is, in you know, 20 minutes or something, some amount of time, that this spell just dispels itself and it, and isn't on the doors anymore. I think that's part of the spell. I I feel like it is, but it's it's kind of vague. It says, "You and the creatures you designate when you cast the spell, oh, can open the object normally." Oh, but it says, it says, locked for the duration, uh, impassable until it is broken or the spell is dispelled or suppressed. Can I just, like, ch choose? I would say you can dispel it yourself. Okay, all right. Because it makes no sense that if you lock something of your own and say, like, ah, oh, shit, I lost my key. <laughs> so the first thing it says is you and the creatures you designate when you cast the spell can open the object normally. Yeah, so I don't even need to do the password, but but what I want is for it to uh, go away as go if away. nothing happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it is going to cost you fifty gold to cast this spell twice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've got that's, keep that in mind. Anyone that casts spells now, make sure if it says something of worth that the spell consumes, it does cost money. Like the opposite of the like coin operated like bathrooms in like Europe and stuff. <laughs> just yeah. slide two slots in. Lock. Um Okay. Uh yeah, there is the window. You lock the door, there is the window there sitting there locked. You can see obviously, but is there any does anyone else way that does better windows? with the reedy words want to make sure there's nothing on this desk? Uh, I'll come take a look while they deal with that window. What did I need? An investigation? That's an investigation. Oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> okay, so you do, um, there is the locked drawer, but also, like, like just about hitting on the side, there's also a locked back compartment on the <clears throat> on the desk that is definitely locked so many locked things yeah you like over there with the thieves tools on the on a roll doing the doing the the or is, how does the wind yeah how does the window Open. I doubt the window would lock from the outside, so we can probably no, no, it. I, it's locked. All that I'm saying, it's a locked window. So, like coming in through this, you would have had to figure something out. But you can unlock the window from the inside. No, oh, okay, I unlock the window from the inside. I'm gonna just kind of like check, poke my head out, see what the plan out my uh, jump, start tying the rope, get it ready. Okay, I will say, as you're about to open it, you do. Because your passive wisdom is high enough, 
notice that there are a string of runes across the base of the window. Like, you're, like, just about to lift it up. Um, you aren't really paying attention, but I, I just for sake of um, expedience, it's the same type of runes that you saw on the on the cases in there. Oh, so it's an alarm. Like that, that we need to dispel they've, they've got their yeah. ring alarm set up on all their windows. <laughs> well, so if it's just an alarm, <laughs> I feel like they already are starting to know something's up. Like we can, we can maybe yeah, just make a break for just, it. Maybe just bail. I don't know. Can we? Sure. Yeah. Can, can does do we know? Like would we know if the alarm, like tells exactly which, uh, triggered it. Like which rune triggered it or no? I I would say someone can make an arcana check to do that, but you would have no real clue. Uh you would think that it's just a global alarm. Okay. Actually. Oh shit. Probably should have said this one. It says the windows are too small for a medium creature to climb through. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. So we gotta go retcon all of this. No, um, I'll say that's <laughs> that's my bad. You can climb through this window. You're probably gonna need to do some level of dexterity check. If you're a medium creature, you need to make some sort of check to get through. Well, that's on me for get... not remembering. Um, no. Hmm. What is the height of our building relative to the building next door? Are we can we see the roof of the following next building over or what? It's or about it... even. So you you would it'd probably be about five to eight feet up to jump on the sloped roof. Okay, okay. I will I like does anyone else want me to use my crossbow thing to try and grapple to the other building? So I think I think you should try to unlock the desk first. Um, see if there's anything in there because I feel like Christopher can probably just jump with a rope. Um, okay. And as soon as we Bell bail, if we're planning on just bailing, then alarms going off. Okay. I'll look through the desk. You, you said unlock the desk. I need to unlock it. Yeah. All right. A drawer and a back panel. Not strength. Hang on. Cancel. Let me try that again. Click. It opens. All right. What's in it? Inside, you see a small journal. Full of all kinds of confessions um full of i are you gonna sit and read secrets it? nope i'm just gonna take it just taking it and closing, <laughs> closing it back up yep okay <laughs> we ain't got time yeah that's fair in the hidden panel can it can you unlock that with the thieves tools or no <laughs> no that was the that was oh, the, okay. the hidden panel oh um, actually, as you open that, make a, um, me. <laughs> make a, uh, constitution saving throw. Okay, constitution. Okay, 20. It's actually, it's as you pull the cloak out. 20. Okay, you are, you are <laughs> a lucky gun, son of a gun. You feel, um, uh, like, almost like a, a static shot go through your body, and your arm locks up for a second before you're able to shake it off. You would have been paralyzed for 20 minutes. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> well, we would have been carrying Felix out of here. That would have gone well. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'm just getting is, real. Uh, um, at this point, leaving a bar of soap. There are, you are hearing bangs on the door. Like, who's in there? People, check the other rooms. Housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to okay, roll. Jump it out the window. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Christopher's got to go first it. with the. Do you try to rope. disable the um the runes. 
No, I'm I'm not even opening it. I'm just bashing it open. <laughs> the dramatic effect. Okay, okay. fine. Open it. Um, the window oh. is. So so uh, I don't think you you need to make an acrobatics check to get through this window. <laughs> Before you bash through the window, <laughs> you just like I imagine you're backing up like. I think we, it's like I, a '90s '90s movie where you can. Just I'm like gonna crash. notice and say, "Wait, wait, wait, <laughs> wait!" Can we please not bash? Because if you're not, if we're not gonna dispel the the thing, I'd rather have a silent alarm going off magically than a loud crash. Fine. All right. <laughs> Although, okay. if you so. bash through it, maybe it doesn't set off an alarm. Who knows? So you didn't trigger. That. I would say with that. 20 arcana you know you could disable this alarm pretty easily Carrick. it'll take like 30 seconds okay sure <laughs> so yeah let's do it if it's that easy, easy, then, yeah. another arcana check to to learn more about these alarms that you've rolled like four for now i know um, yeah you're able to just kind of like you take out like a knife and just like run it across like yeah it's disabled the alarm yeah, is that, that was my initial impulse in the other room was that th that would do this but since we had to spell magic okay cool yeah. i do that then. oh no you, you couldn't have not done you could not have done this on that other one. Oh, okay okay these are much simpler alarms okay cool i run do i even have a knife somebody give knife my this. dagger i yeah, give <laughs> yeah. my dagger <laughs> I have a spare one. One of my seven yes. short swords. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll jump across. Well, or yeah, I'll scope it okay. out. Scott, Each... scope the landing. See everything. I will say the two big guys in here have to make an ath or a um acrobatics check to wiggle your way through this tiny window. The other I, two I, guys I, are well... wise enough to I'll refine my question. The roof on the opposite side, is it an unoccupied space that I can see? Yes. Okay, I will misty step over there. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, Smart. That's a really that's a really good call. You can do the same, Carrick. I can. I'm also gonna misty step over there. I'm not gonna try to roll acrobatics <laughs> or any bullshit. Yeah, I'll, I'll roll acrobatics. Uh, God. yeah, yours would be, uh, just to jump. You can fit through the window oh, pretty cool. easy enough. Um, but you, you have to, um, like if you're trying to get onto the, um, yeah, onto that, you have second story work, so you have advantage on it too. Okay. So, so make an acrobatics, acrobatics check. Advantage. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you plant against the wall. Um, and fall down to the ground, you are still, you're prone. Um, you can still climb up that building with relative ease afterwards, but you are prone for a round. Okay. Before you get up. Christopher, what are you doing? Uh, I'm just, I guess, wiggling out. Everybody just, I was yeah. like getting ready to get everybody across, and I'm like, look across, and they're all over there. <laughs> <laughs> Very confused how two of them just... You're jumping, so they figured out how to do it themselves. <laughs> I hope I just get, uh, I was hoping I just got stuck and just like. <laughs> nope, you are barely. The DC on that was 20 for you to get through. <laughs> oh, man. Um, You are able to do it. And now make uh, an athletics check to jump over. The DC is like five because of your b fucking boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are able, you're up there. And now there's just Felix on the ground. Um. And for the sake of expedience, you're able to climb up that wall easily, and you guys can are now all on the roof. And where do you go from here? The next uh, alleyway. Uh, away. <laughs> okay, how do you guys all leave? I think we want to get to like a, at least one or two buildings away before we climb down, right? Yeah, I was thinking up and over the roof and then jump to the next building and then, I don't know. <laughs> just parkour. Okay. Right um, are, are you guys just in a dead sprint or are you trying to sneak? Mm -mm. Uh, I think we're I mean, deliberate and quick. Be... Yeah. 
Like deliberate said, I, is, and quick, is, but not is, necessarily is wearing his plate mail to, right now or not. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, one hundred percent he is. So let's let's like a, you know, I don't think it has to be super fast. Okay, you guys can roll your roll stealth checks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's two successes, two failures. Um, we'll roll a perception check for the guards. There are six of them, so there are six perception checks. No, four. Four perception checks. You need to be, what is, if we average all those together, 18 plus 28 plus 17 is uh, 45 divided by four. About 11. Is <laughs> I'll, I'll round it up to 12. <clears throat> Only one of them noticed you. <laughs> I got an 8, a 9, a 9, and a natural 20. <laughs> um, You do, like, uh, as, as you're going and kind of tripping, they're... They don't really know. They know what direction you're headed, but they don't like see you. They're like I hear, I hear them moving off that way. Get, get this, this accomplice of theirs out of here. And uh, they're pointing to Jerry. You see them like carrying <laughs> Jerry off and just throwing him into the street and calling <laughs> over the crowns guard. <laughs> Starting to feel bad for Jerry. Maybe. Yeah, this this guy is just working. This is like, this is like you bouncing up on a Securitas guy. Um, Jerry's muted. Or, yeah, you muted. Jerry's definitely gonna come back like Joker, super villain <laughs> style at some point in our lives. We've just destroyed this poor man. <laughs> he 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 switched to a life of crime after this. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, so you guys um, are not out of danger yet. So, um, is it just continuing to run? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, now at full speed. So, I want everyone to make athletics or acrobatics checks, or you can use a spell if there's something that you want to do to help yourselves escape. Like, it's kind of the same as when you were following that, if there's anything you want to do to just, like, get away. <laughs> Worked great for me last time. Yeah. Eric's looking. What spell? What spell? What spell? What, what can I do that I don't have to roll this? <laughs> um. Should I just uh, like start belaying Carrick? Just <laughs> already. <laughs> Yeah, uh, whatever. Here we go. We're gonna. Can roll. I just backpack him. Can I just like tie him on like a backpack? And just... um, you would be moving at half speed and with disadvantage. You said athletics or acrobatics. Or acrobatics. Okay, twelve. You are you are definitely lagging behind. Um, but with all of that, there's only one roll they need to beat. Probably is. Like sixteen. That's a six. You guys are running off and just I'd imagine it's like randomly going places over these roofs. Um until you like kind of get off the main street, are able to jump down like down like a fire escape and just start weaving through the streets and you eventually you do not hear any yelling or pursuit anymore. And you guys are in the West Outer Steads with all of your stuff. It's the middle of the night. What do you do? Um, is there an easy way for me to get in contact with Giannis? Uh, you have your tubes. Yeah, I, I'd like to... Could I send... This or did we along? set up a rendezvous with him? I mean, he knew we were coming for this. Yeah, I don't know if we set up a rendezvous with. I don't think we set up. Um, a, I think your I, your idea was to like meet up again tomorrow at that um at his hotel. Okay, then we can just wait and, and yeah. Uh, we'll so head back to the inn. Yep. Uh, um, the leaky tap. Sleep off the sleep off the adrenaline. <laughs> There's. I don't think there would be much sleeping. 
perfect heist. You guys <laughs> got three knocks against you. Um, um, evidence left behind. Actually, only two. It was really breaking every single acid vial. <laughs> And the other one was not stealthily entering the balcony <laughs> or the her quarters. Other than that, don't know if that could have gone much better. And and any incursion is theoretically just pinned on the silver whoever what's her buckets. Yes. And let's be honest, like let's like there was really only one casualty. <laughs> like Jerry got a bad, like, and he's not I dead. Mean, we didn't kill not, him. Like, I mean, uh, yeah, he's not dead. So I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure there were zero casualties. <laughs> he's just closer to death by eight years. On Carrick's right. scale of did I lightning bolt him in the chest? He's, he's fine. What are you talking about? We didn't do anything <laughs> wrong. Okay. Uh, yeah, you guys are able to make your way back to the uh, leaky tap, um, and. Let's see, do do do, do do do. Okay, uh, yeah, able to make your way back to the league tap and kind of sleep off for the night. So, um, if there's not anything else you always want to do for the night, you guys can go to sleep. Um, do we want to look at that journal now, or just wait till the morning? Yeah, we can look at it. I mean, yeah, it is also written in a cipher, so um, whoever's going to read it needs to make an intelligence check to see kind of how long it'll take to can I, really can I use comprehend languages to... Uh... Yes, you can. You can do that. You'll have advantage on it on the intelligence check. Okay, cool. I, I'd like to do that. Okay. Uh, uh, um... Intelligence, where are you? said intelligence is over here. 16. Yeah, it'll probably still take um, the better part of the evening, um, but you can kind of get a general gist of it. Um, it is essentially the personal jur journal of uh, Lady Bitterant. Um, one second. Uh, whoop. And it uh, pretty much corroborates uh, your other notes about blackmail and being and kind of like this uh, forced hand uh, to acquiesce to Merith because of, you know, information he has on her and being blackmailed and like, then like kind of like, well, at least I'll get to go on vacation while they use my place for whatever's going on so it's just kind of yeah just she's corroborates like a pawn. everything she's a, she's a pawn but you know yeah she's just a rich asshole yeah um yeah and it's just you know there's probably like if you spent a lot more time you could find out some other information from here that maybe you could use later in in time but kind of in immediate use that's what you get it's um okay yeah more corroboration than anything else. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. okay. Um, Do we get a long rest out of this overnight? Yeah, it's it is pretty late by the time you guys get back because I imagine you, um, and you're still dressed as the uh, as the guards for the place. Should probably change before we go to bed, maybe, but. <laughs> Yeah, that. Eric wants his jammies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean my jammies. <laughs> yeah, so you, um, yeah, you guys all get a long rest by the time it's all done. You guys aren't going to be waking up until probably 11, 12 o'clock the next day to get your long rest. Um, so, but you do. You get a long rest. You wake up in the morning around 11 o'clock. Uh, yeah, what do you do for the day? When are we meeting again? Tonight? Uh, 
Johnson said he's going to be at his place, essentially laying low. So it's kind of balls in your Where court on that one. He had he didn't even know when you guys were going to do this. Mm. So maybe we just get so that taken care of. Unless yeah, at this point it is two days before the meeting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we should go meet uh, Giannis as soon as possible. Yep. So uh, do you all go or just? Yeah, we can all go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You guys go uh, back <laughs> up to the Penta Market, um, past the Involvable Vagrant uh, in that same kind of area. That's to the thirty-five uh, point star, um, or the thirty-five triangles. What did I call this? That place? Something like that. Um, John is kind of like when, uh, I'm. I'm gonna try and blend it. Like we're gonna go in, but I'm not like gonna be like right with them. I'm like blending in. Like I'm here, but I'm not here. Okay, like, so you're just like, you're at like another table or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you come in like five, ten minutes later, and it's kind of have a it's it's an it's an inn and tavern. So there's drinks, there's food. So just guy coming in for lunch, uh, and just kind of sit there. Um, Yeah, with that, I mean, if you're sitting down there and watching, make a just make a perception check to see if you notice. Uh, I assume you're just like kind of post and watch. Yeah, just you know. Yep, I see nothing. Great. <laughs> yeah, you're just you're you're just kind of decompressing from the night before. <laughs> Fuck. The place is just too crowded. He's uh, trying to come to terms with how much we fucked over Jerry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel Jerry. Jerry. I'm like five drinks in. <laughs> Jerry! You're, you're, you're in your mind thinking, like, how do we find out where this Jerry guy lives? So we can fuck him up more. Oh, God. <laughs> some fire. Him is in his whole family. Yeah. You need to <laughs> fix this or put him down. One or the other. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Jonas, uh, um, uh, lets you guys in up there. He goes, uh so soon i uh i guess what 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 news do you got for me well uh it's as you uh imagined um looks to be some some uh blackmail involves people trying to blackmail the five guys and ophelia mordoon <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, and I present him with uh, the journal and the uh, copy of the letters and let him know that this couldn't have been us because we were we were out of town by the time that this letter was written. Because yep, that this is kind of kind of damning, but like this feel like we're missing something here like why 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 at this time why with ophelia like oh man i don't know if i totally have the clout that would be needed to present these as as real um i can i can help i can try to get a, a meeting with the gentleman but that's probably going to be hard is, is there anyone else that, that could possibly help us out with this we meet with Ophelia. Is she going to be here for this? Yeah, you would know that she probably got in town last week. Like, she can corroborate and and potentially bring this. Bring this forward. Yeah, so that's a that's a that's a great idea. Um, um, let me put my feelers out to find out where she would be staying. I'd imagine the pillow trope, but who knows? She's you know kind of high profile person might have some house this house here so um let me put out my feelers um and you uh take the day and i'll i'll get back to you as soon as possible great is there any way you can move this and i uh present the the tiara and she looks at him like yeah <laughs> <laughs> he just like looks at him, he's like without a doubt <laughs> And, like eyes goes wide. Um, you would guess that the thing's worth about two thousand gold. Cool. So he's like, um, yeah, I'll um, 
I'll, 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 I'll just take my 10% cut as usual and, and yeah, this might take a little bit longer than the day. So <laughs> assuming we're all alive come a week or two from now, uh, I can probably, I can probably get you, get you something. We have no use for it, so. <laughs> other just than, pull, other than just monetary... pull this thing that these people have been playing a game with forever and just say, well, fuck you guys. I mean, it, they don't know it was us. I know. <laughs> just give it but to now What are we going to do? Just take it back to like, huh? It was no, I just like, I like the idea that it kind of bounces between houses and families, but now it's at nobody's. Now so it's everyone gone. just assumes it's at someone else's. <laughs> So you now have an unwinnable game. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you guys kind of have the day to yourselves. Is there anything you want to do during the day uh, while we're waiting for Giannis to get back to you? Um, I am going to bard as much as I can to all the places telling the story of Jerry who lost his memory. The heroic Jerry. <laughs> They got cast a spell. He saved several civilizations, but the cost was he came back home eight years later and didn't okay. even remember his. Heroic. Okay, so you're telling the Ballad of Jerry. Ballad um, of Jerry. Yeah. Okay. Going around mm -hmm. to the different bards and just busking the Ballad of Jerry. Um, make a performance check. Doing the smoke stuff too, because it's uh, <laughs> my my new smoke extension. Your 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 vape extension on on <laughs> the bagpipe. Yep. Uh, with strength, of course. <laughs> no, it's not bagpipes. It's just a straight performance check. Oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, Hey, pretty good. People kind of get into it. And they're like, man, I haven't heard this one before. What is this this new story? <laughs> and they go, hmm. Hmm. I'll have to I'll have to go to the bookstore to see if there's anything else about Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> and you create just just small like people just talking about... through the streets and hearing the Jerry Springer's chant. Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not, you know, it's not like you convince people he's a hero, but he's a known, a known. It might, it might permeate over a little while. All right, I did my part. I'm done. I'm done okay. For the day. Yeah. okay. Anything else? Any shopping? Anything like that that people want to do? If not, we can fast forward to probably middle of the evening. Um, you get a little, a little tube, a tube note, uh, giving the, um, address, like, as he thought it is at the pillow trove, which is in the tri spires. Um, yeah. So you need to kind of go there and, um, ask for Ophelia there. Um, I did have a housekeeping. I couldn't remember yes. what I bought that cloak of protection. What was the... Do you remember how much that was? I don't think I took it off. It was fifteen hundred. Okay. And then I'm gonna unat I have attuned that and unattune my boots of elven kind, but can I sell the boots, I guess? Uh yeah, you could probably sell the if you wanted to sell the boots, he would probably take them off your hand for uh, make a persuasion check. Yeah, he'll take them off your hands for like five hundred. Okay. Um. Yeah, he says, and uh, yeah, if you need anything else, um, I was able to dig back a couple other items. If you guys are interested in in, in coming back, um, it's kind of the back stock for uh, these good clients that I'm having right now. So, if you ever want to come back, or I have some spells that you had asked about before, so. Uh, Thank you for your patronage, and we hope to see you soon. So. It's like he has new stuff? Is that what you're 
Uh, yeah, like one or two new things. Sure. What do you got? Um, he's like, well, he rings out and just like lifts up this big chain and drops it on the table. And, and that like at the end of the chain, it has like a, like a dragon's mouth. And he's like, um, well, see this here you can take. And he like pulls like just a like long sword down from like one of the plus one long swords that he has. And he's like, you just hold this to this for a bit. And you see it like as it's over the hilt, it kind of closes its jaws. And then he's like, then you take this thing over here and it has a little like shackle manacle thing on the other end. And um, now please step aside, step aside. And he goes, throws it. And it like gets to the, it's gets to the end. And then he says, and then with just a little jerk, it flies back exactly to his hand. I call this the uh, the chain of returning. It, it's about at, uh, let's see, like throw something for about thirty feet, and it will come roaring back to you, um, assuming you have enough strength to 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 pull it. So, hmm. yeah, it's essentially a thirty foot thirty foot chain that you can throw, pull back your weapon on a DC twelve athletic or strength check. And that there will run you probably about um, uh, 15 to 17, 50, something, somewhere in there. Okay. 15 gold? 1,500. <laughs> 16 uh, gold? <laughs> 16 gold. Um, and did I have, I can't remember if I had another item. Don't think I did. No, that was the only one that that and he's like, and I have a, a few um, higher level scrolls that I can I can part with as well, because um, you had mentioned mentioned some need for maybe some magics. So higher level scrolls, you said. Yeah. Um, so he has one fifth level scroll of Rary's telepathic bond, um, and then. Hold on. Need to get to the right thing. And, and I can scrolls I can I can scribe anything from a scroll, right? Yeah. And then a fourth level scroll of polymorph. Okay. How um how much for the first one? The Rarys Telepathic Bond? Yeah. Would be thirty five hundred gold. Uh, do I know what that is? Uh, does he, maybe he can it, tell me what that is? Yeah, he can tell you what it is, so I'll just go and paste it here instead of... It might just be called telepathic. Uh, Rary's telepathic bond. I just want I just want to post it. I'll just read it. Um you forge a telepathic link among up to eight willing creatures of your choice within range, physically physically linking each creature to all the others for the duration. Creatures with intelligence scores of two or less aren't affected by the spell. Until the spell ends, the target can communicate telepathically through the bond, whether or not they speak have a common language. The communication is possible over any distance, though it can't extend to other planes of existences. Mm -hmm. So, essentially gives you telepathy. Um, yeah. Eh, I don't need another reason to talk to people. <laughs> okay. And then the other one's polymorph. Um, and I already have polymorph. Okay. Yeah, other than that, uh, I think you might have every other spell on his list. Okay, cool. So the chain thing, is that like, it's a one, you use it one-handed? Like, I don't know. Uh, like, it, you, you would be able to use it with any weapon. It's an extender, just anything. Yeah. <laughs> so it, just, it essentially gives the weapon the throne property and the ability to return it. And you have to use an can you yes do you yeah you have to use an action to return it? Uh 
it would be uh, your bonus action probably to return it. Oh, okay. So I, if you throw it, it's only going to be able to make one attack. You aren't going to be able to like throw mm -hmm. it, return it, and hit again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it just gives you a ranged weapon that you can always have available to you. Kind of like it. Um, what? Kind of like it. Okay. I'm looking for range that actually works. <laughs> hmm. And instead of pulling out your one shot musket. <laughs> yep. So. Um. Yeah, think about it. It'll, it'll about still it. be here. So I'll think about it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, take a quick break. I need something to eat real quick. Snack time. It's twelve o'clock, right? It's not. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, yeah, you're given the 
location of Ophelia, staying at the Pillow Trove and Tri Spire, so you guys can all head out there if you want. Let's go. Yep. Um, you guys all look nicer now. You look like fine, upstanding people. You're able to get into the Tri Spire, no problem now. Um, and you make your way to the Pillow Trove. Um, on entering, uh, you, it's a beautiful, like nicest hotel you've ever seen. Um, about six we've stories tall. We we've what? been there. Yeah, we've stayed there. We know yep. it well. <laughs> know it well. Um, it's got a yeah. front desk. What? We can impress our new friend Chonk here. Yeah. <laughs> no, Chonk Chonk is Chonk is uh, he's, already left. Yeah, he's, he's with not. the other two at the other inn. No, he's he's gone. Oh, he left, left. Yeah, he left to go follow, find out where that spear is somewhere in the mountains to the east okay, or west. Cool. Um, so, yeah, you go up to the front desk lady is standing there, um, a, uh, a beautiful half-elven woman um, that smiles as you walk in. How may I help you, sirs? Uh, we're here to meet with Ophelia Mordun. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, give me a moment. I will send a, a page up and uh, and see if she will meet with you in in our. She like points over to like a little cafe sitting area. Like, please wait here. Um, you wait for about five ten minutes, and then Ophelia comes. You see her. Coming down the stairs with, um, you know, that ashen skin, dark red eyes, and the uh, two horns that come up to a straight point behind her head. And she, she comes and, you know, looks always very severe, always very serious, but gives a slight smile as she sees you. It's like, so how are my four daddies doing? And what do I owe this pleasure? By the way, saying that was super gross. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Should we give her my our business card? Yeah. Like, yeah. I have three of these from you now. Thank you. <laughs> you can tell, uh, giving someone though, a like, business card is does things like that. She is she is um easily you can see she's glad to see you. Like the amount of favor that you have done her is very large. Whether or not she likes you as people, who knows? But wow. She likes you as assets. Ophelia, do you like us as people? <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, I have. Uh, we have some news. Um, I don't know who. How much you know about? Do I know Merith's last name? About Merith. Uh... Max Cylindar. Max Cylindar. It's. It is unpronounceable. <laughs> how do you spell it? Because I got to put it here in his little note. Hold on, because it is truly just a reverse of a different character's name from Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Uh, targets, where he's from. His name is, or it's spelled, N-A-X-I-L-D-A-N-A-R-R. N-A-X-I-L-D-A-N-A-R? And one more R at the end. Okay. And that's the backwards of someone's name. So someone's name is no, no, no. So, so in the in the other one, it was um, Nareth Maxinaldar, and in oh. this one it is Nareth or Merith Maxinaldar. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, sorry. Anyways, um, I I I, have, uh, I don't I don't know how much you know or if you know of Merith Maxinaldar. <laughs> Oh, yep, yeah, he's just a lieutenant in the prime organization. Runs out of Diastock, I'm pretty sure. Kind of a pompous man. Yeah, he's a real piece of shit. 
<laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> tell me more. Uh, he's he's uh looking to. We think, uh, based on some intel and some of the investigation that we've done, that he is out to try and usurp uh, the gentleman. And I think he wants hmm. to use you and the five guys to, to do it. Hmm. So you say you have some sort of proof of this? This is what we've found. And I hand over the documents. Okay. Um, he reads uh, the documents. Um, uh... This, well, this is quite, quite damning. Um, I, uh, what, what do you want me to do with this? I, I appreciate it become, coming to my attention, but um, from the sound of this, it sounds like I should just hightail it out of town, and um, well, we forego need, we this, need... uh, forego this meeting with the gentleman altogether. If it seems that his uh, someone's gunning for the top spot. Well, uh, what I want, I need you to be there, number one. I need you to bring this forth because I'm looking to be the right hand of, of the gentleman myself. And I can't have anyone getting in the way of that. And Merith here is getting in the way of it. <laughs> and if I'm the right hand of the gentleman, then you know that opens up more doors for you. Okay, um, make a... Um, persuasion check with uh, advantage. It's not a great Jesus. Oh, that's that's brutal, dude. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> um, she thinks for a moment. What exactly would that mean? Business for me, if you are the right hand. Do I have any guarantees? Have I ever led you astray? Have I ever done anything wrong by you? Haven't I always... Uh, I have always delivered all my promises to you. Me, I thought I you said you liked to see people. <laughs> no, she never <laughs> said that. I do. I do like you, but I just got what I want and now. You you understand the situation that I'm in. <laughs> For you bringing this to me, I just got what I want and am trying to pay you forward for doing it, but uh, this is very concerning and is there... I need something. I need some. Just let me let me think on it. Let me think on this for the night. Come back tomorrow, and I'm sure I'll come up with some way that we can make this mutually beneficial for each other. Or is there anything else anyone wants to do? Yeah, you guys have any ideas? <laughs> not not violent. Probably. <laughs> Kill oh. her. <laughs> Never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> that is anything anyone wants to give up? Anything anyone wants to this try? Is very unrelated, but I have a bunch of screenshots on my desktop of things like pull requests, 666 responses, 69 replies. <laughs> 69 thank yous. How many how many of those are sent to our work chat? I think I, I, I'm i pretty sure I send them all. Yeah. Because I do the same thing. 666 pull requests. That's a lot. But we don't... Yeah. Pull requests get open for the most mundane shit. And sometimes they, they don't get merged. And yeah. <clears throat> 
Yeah. Anything anyone wants to do? Otherwise, she's going to kind of adjourn and. Is there anything that anybody else can do to help persuade her? Besides intimidation? <laughs> I would not. I, I don't want I, You could intimidate, but I, I don't want to break this relationship in any way by a bad intimidation. <laughs> <laughs> so you're worried more about the failure than the success. <laughs> well, well, yeah, because I'm just gonna turn around, shout at her, do it for Jerry. Just <laughs> do it for Jerry. I will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make a. I. I don't know how this would do anything to her. Just make an intimidation roll. I don't think this is that you're intimidating her, but. <laughs> She's heard the tale. It got to her. <laughs> she goes. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but that was such a. This must be important. This must be true. This must be. You're right. I don't need the day. I will. Uh, I'll. Give me. I do need the day to set up a meeting tomorrow with the gentleman. Um, but I will. I'll come back your 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 information to him. I'll put my my weight behind that. But just know there will be there will be I would say we're less than even now. <laughs> you owe me at at some point and I do collect. So is that um not equitable equitable to you? All we can ask for. Yeah. Well, now I need to go find out who the hell this Jerry person is. I, uh, maybe you don't have to worry about that. Um, no, I assume he is, um, as we call collateral damage. Has to happen sometimes. Uh, happens Dangerous most of the time. business we, we live in. Dangerous world. <laughs> yes. Okay, um, she says, well, thank you. Um, uh, it seems you are staying at the Leaky Tap, if I uh, heard correctly. Yeah, we don't want to raise too many eyebrows staying here too many, too many of us. We're not of course, of course. Um, I will come collect you in, in, in the morning. Right. Okay. Um, the intimidation DC that I set on this was 20. <laughs> <laughs> the the persuasion was only a 15, and you just rolled. Bad. I guess you only have a plus one on persuasion. Yeah, so. my persuasion is not as good as it should be. Yeah. I, I put it all um, in deception, thinking I'd need to deceive people more often than I did. <laughs> like, there's no need to deceive her. Mm -hmm. There was There was a way that... You wouldn't have had to roll at all, but you guys didn't. You guys missed something in the vault. Oh well. Oh no well. Right. Oh well. Um. Blackmail yeah, against guys... Ophelia. What? More blackmail against her. Um. You don't have to tell um, me if you don't want to, but no, it'll it'll come it'll come across in the. Okay. As oh, we continue. Oh. Um. Yeah. So really, I forgot to say this. The one other like thing you guys can do uh, unless you want to wait um you do know where the gloom runners have been hanging out this whole time um the they've been hanging out at a place called the eunuch which is a brothel um and uh you know you you do know where that is uh you've been told and also uh, you do know where their kind of safe house has been. That's kind of what Giannis had kind of given you, like, hey, ways of, you know, you guys took the the route 
of breaking into a highly guarded vault um, and skip them doing that. So you have the rest of a day if you want to do anything with that, um, but kind of like open threads here in the city. It's just shopping, regular downtime stuff, or that that you can check into. So. And if you don't want to do anything, then we can just fast forward. Just let me know. More ballad to Jerry. No. More ballad to Jerry. Do you actually try and find out where Jerry lives? And do you oh, no, I never want to see him again. I never want to see him again. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing him again will get, bring Panic too much attack. guilt. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, looking at my, the scrolls I have still that I could work on, I see one that you gave me called Scroll of a Carrion Flight. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's, that that's a Morrowind one, right? That's not an actual D&D &D thing. No, that is not an actual thing. That is, that is a single use. That was a okay, joke. Okay, so I can't, I, I can't scribe that. No, you cannot scribe that. And you'll okay. die if you do, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So yes, that is It will be fun is, when it finally comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a joke that I made. I figured. Um, but you gave it to me, so I you could use it. And if you have featherfall, you'd be just fine. I do have featherfall. Oh. <laughs> That's what it is. All right. Save you, that. you can use that next time you have to jump over a ten foot gap. <laughs> <laughs> As long as there's not a ceiling within a thousand feet or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Gosh, Morrowind was so good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everything except for the fact that you couldn't hit anything. Just when you sat there on a rat and just tried to hit it with a chitin <laughs> axe. I recently downloaded it. I like have intent to play it again just for old time's sake. It is there is so many busted things in that game. I bet. Just enchant a shield that when you equip it, it gives you either a plus one or a plus fifty to strength. And so you just unequip it and re-equip it until you get 50. <laughs> yep. Um, okay, so nothing else? That was so one we'll special thing about uh, Elden Ring, that you actually have to do stuff. Where it felt like the, <laughs> it, it tickled the same itch. Yeah. yeah. I love that game. August liked that game too. <laughs> I had to turn all the blood off, but. <laughs> well, if you like that, you should try the same with, you should play Armored Core, if you, Armored Core 6. If you have a PlayStation 5, it's so much fun. Made by From Software, which. I don't think they make a bad game. If you like the skill type, so. Um, okay, it's the next morning. Um, were you scribing any spells, Carrot? Uh, yeah, can I do, can I put some time into one of them to summon lesser demon? Yeah, you can get like I'd say probably with all this going on, you could probably get like six hours, four or six hours. Oh, okay, cool. Your spell book. How many spells do you have in your spell book? Uh, let me count and get back to you. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Next morning, uh, you guys all awake and. There is a, um, a message sent up to you. You, are, you guys are having breakfast. Um, it's probably 9, 10 o'clock, and um, Ophelia doesn't come in, but it seems like a, a guard uh, wearing similar armor of, like, 
what the grudge gang wore back up in shady creek goes kind of hard leather with a i think the mardoon families was a red sash over it kind of denoting that and she says uh lady ophelia is here and uh, we'll uh go get in our cart and we'll get you to where we're going and he escorts you outside and there's a sure enough a carriage waiting for you there and um you head off um winding through the streets of the dash you aren't going to a necessarily nice part of town it's kind of a like leaky tap is like right on that edge of being in a nice part versus being in a crap crappy part and you guys kind of like keep going east into the crappier parts of town until you stop in front of this like single story like flat roofed um bar that there's a small sign in it that says the evening nip um which is i know it's not much but um remember to be polite we are a guest in this man's city so uh yes and she gets out and walks into the bar there's these two gruff looking bouncer types leaning against the wall um that just look and nod at ophelia as she walks in um do you all follow absolutely yep so following her there's it, it is truly this place is a shithole it smells musty it's there's this just this old old looking um dwarfish man behind the bar that's just kind of like absent-mindedly cleaning a cup but the rag you see he's using is just grimy and gross there's like maybe three people in the bar but they don't even have drinks at their table they're just kind of sitting there just kind of looking around and uh yeah uh ophelia comes up and says hello clive it's been it's been some time i'm surprised you're still alive we're working at this place he goes ah yeah it's living and um they have a quick back and forth and it's like well you know i bring many gifts today and um would love to see what that gets me and he says oh, okay and he kind of like opens up the bar door like and points like are these guys with you who is who are these guys I'm like yes they're with me they're my personal they're honestly the reason that i'm here 61 spells <laughs> seven cantrips that is bonkers it's really hard to choose what to have prepared every day. <laughs> That's I feel at a certain point it's more important for me <laughs> to give you the tyranny of choice instead of limiting. Yeah. Yeah. Um so uh yeah, he kind of just like, okay, if they're there with you, I guess I don't know. And he just starts mumbling to himself and then comes like, come on, come on, and like opens up the bar and says Get it, get out back and goes to the back and opens up a hatch. And inside the hatch, you see like this gilded, um, maybe not gilded, but brass, like very shiny, well kept spiral like staircase going down. And as you go down, you enter the gentleman's hideout. I think I put you on this map. But I didn't. Give me one second. We need Christopher. Eric. Felix. I'm on the right layer. I'm on the right layer. And I'm on two layers. I got something going on. I see a little corridor, and then I see there's like a backdrop of some big cave or something. Hold on. Hold up. Oh, there's that, and this, and this. Hmm? 
I mean, I what I'm seeing is that you shouldn't see anything but a corridor. That's all I see. Like, I huh. see like maybe ten squares. Yeah. And then the back, yeah. I see these like cross hatched. I don't know somethings. Oh, the I little, see, uh, you see little cr- all black. Well, that's because you aren't on there yet. <laughs> okay. You're talking about the thing to the right that looks unexplored but isn't all black. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that. just. The... <clears throat> oh, okay, that's just the. The line is just off. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> I drew this at eleven o'clock last night. <laughs> or I did the. I didn't draw. I drew it a while ago. I did the. Um, dynamic light at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. And I guess Ophelia's here, too. Oh, Ophelia. So, uh, yeah, you guys come in. Um, uh, let's do a couple things before you move in. There we go. Uh, so go ahead and move yourselves around the corner to the main room. Um, and as you walk in, you are seen into a, like, a decent-sized room. There's some large tables, um, people having drinks, uh... It's much nicer than it is up as low. Even though this is underground, it's well lit. Um, it's still got a little bit of a musty smell to it, but it's uh, quite, not quite nice, but um, uh, but a lot nicer than what you were just in. Uh, yeah, you'll see people watching drinks. You would immediately notice up to your left, there's stairs going up to a balcony. Uh, from that balcony, there are like four doors that I don't have on there that uh, you assume leads off to some rooms. Standing up on that balcony are just three people kind of lazily leaning against. Um, and you would know this, uh, <laughs> what they're leaning against kind of and like have like kind of at the almost ready are four large uh, guns, much like uh, Christopher's musket, although looking a bit um, different. So, so probably not the same thing, but but um, a loud boomstick, so to speak. Uh, to the right, there's a bar with a with a bartender that looks relatively well dressed by comparison to what was going on upstairs. And then in the back, there is a back room or back kind of like up a little bit and uh, towards the back where there is a very nice table that. Uh, looks to have like drink food and quite a bit of paper work on it and sitting behind it is a halfling woman that uh you have never met before and you would assume is the gentleman yeah i was guessing christina ricci is the gentleman (laughs) yep (laughs) so uh yeah, let's go to that page. Let's see. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Um. No. Oh no! I'll be right back, Mike. <laughs> All my notes are about to die. I only have 9% battery. Carry it now. <laughs> 
Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. I've been eating them. You want the other half of my omelet? Mm. My bad. <clears throat> Found it. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, oh, Trot, there's also an ogre that was standing in the corner. I don't have him on the map, but his name's Sam. Some people arm wrestling. Yeah, there's two guys, three get people up on the um, uh, balcony, and then a tough looking um, kind of just a huge burly like mountain of a man with the uh, gentleman uh, is kind of like leaning back against the wall as kind of a personal bodyguard. Okay. Um, Ophelia walks in and says, my dear gentlemen, it is nice to meet you in person. I know that we have talked um, kind of via letter uh, over the past couple months. And I, I know that um, with the help of these people, they've secured my business with you. Uh, but we seem to have a slight problem um, that I would like to bring to your attention so that you are um, aware of some dealings that may be going on tomorrow, uh, or not, is it tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow during um, the presentation of treasures to you by my friend Felix and his uh, four daddies and um, Saxon Thorngage and the Gloom Runners. Uh, so, here it is. Uh, it's like I will. I will concede the floor to my fine friends here. So, what do you, what do you guys do? Um, the, the gentleman stands up. Um, you know, very short halfling, so probably about three foot six, uh, lithe, uh, wearing a billowy like blouse, um, kind of lower cut, like but has like some bracers on it on their arms. Um, this very very um confident looking from immediate sizing up let me see hey so what do you have to tell me uh, very very matter of factly to it right just real quick um uh -huh. this gentleman is newer right like it like she, she yes whatever with, they... within the past like two years the old gentleman um left he kind right. of like rehired someone but this is while while you were kind of kicked out of um of zadash for a while so okay. during that time the old gentleman stepped down and this person was elected or somehow put in into that position okay and that's uh 
when the old gentleman left, that is when the Mardoon stopped doing business with them because that's who they're... Right, right, right. Yeah. So that's kind of why you were trying to secure this business for them. Right. Okay. Um. Well, as uh, Ophelia has, has mentioned, there seems to be some, uh, some dealings with the... Uh, with Marith, uh, he seems to be wanting mm-hmm. to uh, do a do a takeover. Honestly, I think he wants to push you out, and he wants mm-hmm. to use Ophelia here to do it. Okay, those are um, some substantial claims that you're doing right there. Do uh, you have any proof? Because, quite frankly. Um, Marith, I, I call a good friend. We, we kind of came up in the same circles back in, back in the day. So, um, I'd like to know if, um, I don't know you from Adam. So what do you got for me? Well, I, I, before I present anything, I must say that friends change. Uh, Saxon and I once were close and now we're dueling, if you will. I yep. I uh, hear ya. I hear ya. What I have is uh is some evidence, sh- some documentation of uh blackmail letters saying that uh, Ophelia was going to try and take over, but the way that these are dated and the way that these are, you know, uh, the. All of the information here conflicts with where we were and where Ophelia was at the time that they were written. The events do not line up. Hmm. And I uh, hand over so the, kind of like the hand documents over. And, the, and the journal. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay, where does this... Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Have we walked okay. up to her table, I assume, to give her these documents? Yeah, What's the yeah, you positioning guys here? Okay, yeah of the table and you can see like as you are there now the kind of the guards that were up on the um top are not quite as relaxed anymore very much um ready like you know ophelia does come and and just kind of like sits sits at the table as um kind of you are talking behind her um Okay. Okay. Um, but she looks over, so like these seem quite uh, trustworthy. I I recognize the the machine that you probably used. Um, whoever got the hold of one of those, um, good on them. Good on them. That's a, a trusty device when trying to keep records. Um, and kind of, I I assume like the journal was in code. You just kind of like. Yeah, I think I, I would have spent some, some time like trying to scribe and, and like, like yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. So a lot of this does seem to add up. Um, it kind of explains why some business has been going slow with some of our good, um, our previously good companions. And it's nice to know that they are so easily bought. Uh, so we can deal with that later. Hmm, but. Okay. I need you to make a persuasion check. With advantage because of all the stuff you have. All right, here we go. Persuasion. If, if we'll see how the roll goes. <clears throat> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Fuck you did finally. It. <laughs> I will say because of everything that you got, your DC was five, but. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> But with don't, a natural don't 20, tell we'll, me that. We'll 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 go into that later. Then I was I was going to offer if it, if you added intimidation of, of me sharpening my sword would have been helpful. I would have no, just pulled no, it out and started. So, to... Because I think you would have been shot. We would have been killed. <laughs> um, nah. I like to fuck around. They go. Well, damn. Why do you think I got within TP range of getting behind those guards <laughs> up there? <laughs> I um. I guess you're right. Friends do change. Hmm. I know well, nothing of your. 
I know nothing of the relationship between you and, and Merith. Uh, I do know that the relationship between Saxon and I is uh, one of mutual disrespect at this point. <laughs> mutual disrespect. <laughs> Not dislike, just disrespect. I hate that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Well, it seems that I'm probably going to have to learn to hate Merith as well. Um, so... Here's the plan. Obviously, if uh, someone like Merith is thinking that they can gun for my spot, we need to send the message. So, I mean, honestly, we could probably just call this off, but he'll he'll come he'll come again, find some other reason. So, I can't outrightly kill him, and I don't think anyone else should because our organization does um tend to eye for an eye and all that so here's what i say tomorrow we do things as expected uh you were supposed to be getting a note later today saying to enter through the sewer entrance where someone would be walking with you through the through the sewers to lead you here. So it was to put on an air of uh, secrecy in that, since obviously you are now in nowhere the crime den of the biggest crime lord in the city is. So instead, you will just be here, hiding in the rooms upstairs, and we'll make Merith and his crew come in, or at least his crew. But I can't. I don't think I can make Merrick walk through the sewers. That would be a little of a giveaway. And from there, you can get a little bit of revenge on these this person that you hate so much. And I can gloat about capturing Merrick in his lie. What do you say? I want nothing more than to help you in this endeavor. Um, I ask for one thing, and that is the safety of my family. Tell you what, we'll talk about that after this is successful. I have no interest in your family, personally. That's been other people's. So even if you fail, I could probably make that happen. But, succeed. You get more than that, probably. I tell you, the four daddies are always successful. <laughs> that name. <laughs> that name. We'll, we'll, we'll workshop it. <laughs> Just say uh, it a couple from, times. From, from See how you feel about it. it. <laughs> it's working out for us. Okay, well... Uh, just be back here in the morning. I don't quite have rooms for four of your types. and um, But until then, have free drink. Um, I'm going to catch up with my pin pal Ophelia here and uh, and we'll and we'll get to it get to it real tomorrow. And with that that Wait, she wait, turns does, around. Does, she, does the gentleman have yoke here? <laughs> Got to. Okay. Um, you can ask the bartender uh -oh. and make a d make a d twenty roll. <laughs> what if it's a Yepsi establishment? Oh no. Uh, d twenty. Where is the roller? D twenty. Oh god. No. <laughs> that is my next this goal. One, this one's much nicer than the yolk. He goes, ah, oh, sorry, just gave my last bottle to those guys over there. And you see as a guy is drinking like the last glug of it and sets it down. He said, tears slowly rolling down. <laughs> is Tell you what, give it a, give it a few, a few weeks. And I bet we'll get some yolk in, 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 uh, for you. Can I prepay? 
than a layaway program. <laughs> what is this layaway that you speak of? <laughs> layaway doesn't make sense, but I love to prepay. <laughs> I think it's. Can I give him ten gold just to prepay? Yeah, and he takes it and goes, "Sure." <laughs> puts it in his pocket. <laughs> no, the layaway is a joke from our other D and D campaign where we invented layaway to oh, uh, really prepay for things. And like, this is an <laughs> economic scheme that's not good for anybody. Yeah, that's really funny. <laughs> Mixing up my games. Um. Anyways, yeah. So you guys are, <laughs> um are kind of set up you're gonna come here tomorrow um you just say your the passphrase for the um to get into the gentleman's club uh just, not as long as you want but stay here for a drink or two and then head out and then if there's anything else you want to do for the day or just kind of prepare the idea is tomorrow you'll get here early kind of set up um out of sight and just kind of wait. Hell yeah. Okay. So thing these dudes up here know about uh, what's that? Pyrotechnics? Is that even the right? What's black? I, I want to know how to make a grenade that doesn't blow up a city block. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, you can go and talk to them. Uh, I would say they don't know anything. They, uh, the we just we just get this stuff. Uh, you'd have to talk to the boss about where he gets it from. The I don't suggest. I don't. Su or... I don't suggest talking with the boss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good talk. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can I, um, hang on. Are, we, are there any suspicions? Can I just set up one of my spirit shields to just kind of listen here? How long does my new uh clairvoyance spell last does that just uh, come out? let's see how long clairvoyance lasts how do you spell clairvoyance i know same thing <laughs> there's an i in there i think yes c-l-a-i-r-v-o-y-a-n-c-e uh lasts up to 10 minutes oh just 10 minutes yeah. Um, okay, I'll just leave a ghost behind and see if there's any schemes behind the schemes. <clears throat> okay. Um, Do they see? Can they see my ghosts? Um, let's see what Clairvoyance says. You create an invisible sensor. So yours is like quite literally a ghost, like putting its ear out the window. Um... I would say you can do it, but uh, make some sort of sleight of hand check to see if anyone noticed. Like, you you are obviously, like, doing something to do it. You don't just go, hey! Uncle Jimmy, come on. Let's, let's have a chat. Sleight of hand. I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> um, You start, like, this is a new thing for you. You start, like, going like okay i think i just do this this and you just hear a cock from the from upstairs <laughs> you hear three cocks from upstairs and uh and the gentleman <laughs> looks at you the gentleman looks at you and winks and then yeah okay <laughs> just so, checking in just calling calling home no big deal <laughs> bye okay um Anything else you guys want to do the, for the day? Head back to the Leaky Tap, kind of prepare for 
tomorrow at noon. High noon in an underground bar. Yeah, I got nothing else I want to do. Is there, have I been trying to study medicine? Is that something I've been doing? That is something that you wanted to have. Um, uh, what's his name? Swinton. Swinton help you with. Oh, okay, so I need him there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, but he's at the bar with you, so. Oh. You can spend a few hours. Roll a, roll a medicine check. See how much better you get at brewing potions. You get a little bit better. Uh, you have to spend about 25 gold in um, supplies as you're just not making anything of use. But you're kind of, like, with this help, you're getting better. So mark okay. off 25 gold. Yeah. Um, Where am I keeping track of that? I don't know. Um, I had it somewhere. I don't know. I'll yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought I gave you, like, wedges. You can have a wedge for that. A wedge? No, I don't. I can't remember how we said. Like, you had a, t a timer. Yeah. But I don't remember when or where we did it. I'll find it. Yeah. Yeah. But you can add one off or take one off that timer. Okie doke. So, let's get everything set up. It's a good thing you guys only had two things noticed from that heist. My penalties got mean afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you guys are all, um, for all intents and purposes, when you come here, you are up here, although you're in one of the back rooms um, that I didn't draw, but and I can't move you off of it because then you won't see anything. Um, and Side then... conversation before we go forward. Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, Featherfall trying to understand. Uh, it says that you take no damage, but it also says your rate of descent slows to 60 feet per second, which is like 40 miles an hour. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not. I think wh how I think it, it you fall at a much slower pace, and then once you get to the ground, it kind of like, ooh, bonk. Okay. It's not like 40 miles an hour into the ground, because I feel like that would not be good. No, that would not be good. Yeah. Okay, sorry for interrupting. Keep going. No, no, you're good. Um, okay, hold on. I got to get all my get all my stuff up. Got too many things open. Okay. Just get those two. Okay. Um, yeah, you guys are waiting in here when we, uh, around noon. Uh, you do notice that there is no Ophelia. Ophelia does not come to this. She is not sticking her neck out. She did enough to kind of already do that she knows that this will probably come back to her in some capacity um should things go wrong but uh with the yelling of do it for jerry she had to acquiesce <laughs> um okay what we do need oh i do have him you would not know this but oops Marath isn't that big. <laughs> I was gonna say, holy shit. Marath is 17 feet tall. And um but yeah, Marath is here. Um you do notice that um there are a few more um people here. Um like 
a lot of the people that you saw yesterday just look like regular ass people. Like not everyone is a is a fighter or that in a crime organization. I'm Some people just exist to talk. Um, but you do see about three three people that definitely seem um, more um, more of the enforcer type on the. Oh my goodness. That is the worst part about using a PC when you've been using a Mac forever is command is not what you click. Um, so there's that. And um, you hear Merith come in before you actually hear him. He's uh, He's very braggadocious. He says, my dear friend um and you you actually hear him say uh not the gentleman says angela it's so good to see you and she's like kind of spits and says like really my real name i've earned a title you know and seems very cordial and is talking with them and says oh, aren't you excited for this this end of the six month adventure that we've been waiting to see I'm excited to see what my what my little um what, what do we call them? peons were able to bring you and um hopefully they can uh, win your favor and uh, get some get some some work from you in in the future you know they've done great stuff for me but i'm sure they they, they want to move up the ranks so and he's sitting at the bar with with them um oh shoot there's one more of these people Nope, wrong button again. There we are. Um, and and they start talking, so the kind of braggadocious stuff happens. So, so when are we expecting your crews to get here? I know that we were sending them all through the sewers. Uh, you know, like like the lower echelon they are so gentleman says oh you know just probably uh 10 15 minutes maybe and they they have some some conversation uh everyone make a perception check as you're just kind of like listening from behind this door Yeah, at least the three of you all just like to different degrees, just a lot of small chit chat seems catching up. Um, and then, you know, about 10, 10 minutes later, um, you hear a very pointed question from uh, the gentleman. He's like, so how has it been um, staying in Bitterant's uh, home and uh, using her vault? It seems you must have something pretty big on her to give up her, you know, lap of luxury to common little prime lord like you. And he says, and he, um, I would say probably only Thel and Tarek actually heard that. Make a, make an insight check. Um, Thel, you notice, like, even with a guy as put together as Merith and, you know, King of Lies, uh, like, the voice wavers for a second in his next, uh, so it's like, uh, what do you mean? Um, I, I mean, I've, I've done business with Viterant before, but never that. Uh, oh, um, and just, like, just seems to be taken aback by just kind of that, that, like, how do you know about this? I thought I'd been careful. Um, Oh, I should have said there was one more, one other person came in with Merith. Um, is anyone trying to actually look, or are you just all just sitting behind waiting? I think I'm just listening. Yeah, I, I think I'm wait. I'm just waiting. Okay.
one second. We need who was it? No, please. This one. Oop. There is another person sitting at the table with them. Um, and at this point, uh, and you, and you, um, I talked with your sister yesterday, Rufus. It was so nice to see her. Uh, so I'm surprised that you're, you're here with them. It, it, did, did the Bloom Runners get business from the Mardoons as well? And are we going to pit each other against each other here? I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. Um, at this point, uh, you all here like very easily um, for or people screaming, there's an attack, there's an attack. Um, you would recognize uh, the voice of uh, Saxon yelling this as, um, as he... Uh, they all bust in the four, um, the four of the Bloom Runners bust in through this door that is now opened. This, we made it back out here, but, but the, 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 the what, whatever the fuck they're calling themselves now, five guys, four daddies, they, they're wasting things through. I think, I think someone's coming. I think someone's coming to get you, sir. Like, let's, we need to protect you. And, um, yeah. We still have one of their little blood vial things. You still have their cleric's, like, holy symbol. <laughs> I just want to, like... You have never done anything with it. You just have had it. Do we know what happens if we just, like... We don't know it's anything just, about it. You know nothing about it. It's just sat in the inventory. It's a vial of blood, though, right? Like, it's... it's. It has blood in it, yes. And it looks easily breakable? Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. Good to know. Okay. The, uh, you hear the Jones go, like, Oh, shoot. What What do you mean? The, uh, they... Maybe that's why Ophelia is not here. She did want to be here for an oncoming bloodbath. And uh, yeah, what do you guys do? I think it's time to step out of the rooms. <laughs> I'm actually gonna I'm gonna jump down to the table. <laughs> okay. Everyone, I will say that this is uh, surprise round. You don't probably get to attack, but you can, can bust out and position yourself wherever you want. Cool. I'm going to position myself here on this table. Wow. Well, jump. Yeah. The red dots well, came with I, I, Marith, you said? Sorry, what? The red dots came with Marith of those same pictures? No, guys? no, the red dots were just here. Okay. I think I've given Christopher the blood vial thing. It sounds like he wants some, to do something with it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, let's see, I'm going to open up Saxon's page. Okay, so you guys are all in position. What, if anything, do you do? What is what is people? What do people do? <laughs> do you say anything? Uh, I, I I look over at Saxon and just start laughing. And uh, <laughs> we're always one step ahead of you, you selfish little prick. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see the gentleman like kind of chuckles at that and. Uh, this is, yeah, it seems, I don't know how these four daddies would have been killing people in my sewers if they'd been here on my invitation. Merith, how does that make sense? 
How about let's um there you sit down, you wait here. Poor daddies take to your business, and uh we'll just have a wonderful little day. And uh with that, I will let everyone roll initiative. Oh my goodness, so many people to roll initiative for. Um, the character sheet. Are the red dots rolling initiative as well? Yep. Oh, Jesus. Everyone's rolling initiative. Do you need to put up the initiative tracker? Um, one second. I think it's working. Why do my initiative rolls always suck so much ass? Oh no, I hate, I hate when this happens. I don't second. understand how I consistently am last like every time. Okay, uh, so... That plate armor it slows me down. Yeah, Bell is not a 14. <clears throat> I just need to remove the duplicate ones. Carrick is a... Four, not that one. Felix is a nine, not I'll drop that one. I mean, only you can see the duplicates, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, I still have King Jaros on here, so. Mm. So, Fell, Felix, Felix, Felix is the nine. Okay. So now I need to add turn. Add turn. Add turn. I'm pretty sure there's a plugin I could get to just do this for. Add turn. Add turn. <laughs> Add turn. Merrick gets a turn. Rufus gets a turn. Um. So can I go to Gaia? I wish there was a way I could have like done this all before without like you knowing. Mm. Turn. Add turn. And add turn. Okay. So thug one. Thugs have what as their initiative? Plus zero, easy. Nine. Four. Fourteen. Four. Twelve. Fifteen. Marath has a plus three. Twenty-one. Um, Rufus has a plus zero, and Ferris has a minus one. Earth has a plus two. Guile has a oh, okay. Then open dial up. Okay. Oof. There it is. Dial has a plus three. Is 
Jackson has a plus four. Okay, rolled for everybody. Let's sort. First up is Marith, who is immediately going to take the disengage action and get the fuck out of dodge. So 5, uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, 30. We'll put it down here. And gets behind his guys. He's like, uh, yeah, the jig's up, guys. Uh, it's time to go. Get me out of here. Okay. That brings it to Guile's turn. Guile is going to... Um, oh my goodness, what is Guile going to do? Guile is going to look at um, you standing probably closest to them. Um, uh, Christopher? and is going to cast Ray of Sickness at you. That's going to be a uh, 7 plus 8 is 15 against your armor class. 17, alright. Okay, so this this bolt of like sickly green energy rays out to you um, and then um, but you're able to like bat it away or just resist the poisonous effect of it. And then they're going to shift around back here. Um, that brings it to Ferris's turn. Ferris is going to run up to you and take uh, an immediate uh, two swings with this uh, long sword that she has. That is a, uh, both of those are going to hit. Um, so you take uh, one, eight, eight, D eight, eight, and eight. You take seventeen points of damage as just two giant swings of the long sword cut against you, and then as does that spits at you as well. Uh, and then that brings it to your turn, Christopher. Um, I'm going to take one of my short swords. I don't know what this is going to do. I'm going to kind of like a baseball uh, swing with this uh, blood vial against this person's face. I'm going to, I want to hit the vial as it broadsides against their face with this uh, oh. blood vial. Okay, make an attack roll. The strength, right? Yeah, that's fine with strength. Oh man. <laughs> you just miss. You forgot. You the just range. miss completely. I <laughs> will say, and then the vial lands on the ground and shatters. Forgot to rage and do this reckless. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to rage, yeah. <laughs> forgot? Yeah, I just got too excited. <laughs> uh the vial shatters on the ground and now there's just a small puddle of blood on the ground. Oh, now I'm mad. But you can't even really tell because it's mixed with your blood that's all over the ground. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, that pisses me off. Can I rage now? Okay. Yeah, you can go into a rage now. And I'll just say that that was your attack action. So go ahead. You can make one more attack. Can I use my pyre maul to come back around? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you drop the sword, pull your pyre maul around, and you can't make it reckless, though, because you have to call reckless on your first strike. Yeah, that's fair. 13, 13, oh, that's the wrong person. Let's see, does 13 hit? I made these characters 100 years ago. Um, I don't know how, but I'll take it. 13 hits, not wearing any <laughs> armor, this Ferris. So go ahead and roll damage. Uh, oh, wait, so... 12 plus 5 plus 3 is 20. So after being hit for probably one of the bigger strikes you've taken in a bit, uh, you turn around and one-up Ferris as you just 
clock uh, her against the side. Um, and that's that. That brings it to Turf's turn. Turf saw the little vial break on the ground and just says, motherfucker <laughs> just points at you. And seeing you do that, Turf is going to cast um Turf is going to cast a spiritual weapon um that appears above your head Christopher and is going to make an attack that's plus 7 19 plus 7 is 26 so you take you take six or five points of damage reduced in half no it's radiant damage it's not reduced so how much so, uh six no sorry five okay next up is this thug who is going to shift around Take two attacks on you, uh, Fell. What? They're on our, I thought they were on our side. Hey, well, maybe the ones with red dots aren't. Man. Um, that first one's a miss. Second one is also a miss. And just comes and, like, takes its mace and just, like, hits you once and hits you a second time against your armor. <laughs> and, I mean, they didn't get over, uh, they didn't get over 10 on both those attacks, so <laughs> <laughs> they did nothing. Uh, next will be the next thug. Um, this one, immediately seeing that, is going to pull up its rifle and take a shot at the, um, at the thug that just attacked you. Oh my lord. Oh no, that's going to hit. And then you see, like, this rifle isn't, like, it's, like, more like a, almost like a carbine where it, like, cocks back and takes a second shot real quick. Both of those are going to hit. Both of them are going to do D10 of damage, or D8s of damage. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. You see this thing, just, this guy just takes two shots, like, one through the side and one through the shoulder. Um, and isn't looking good after just that uh next up that will bring us to the next thug who is going to um roll around to you carrick and take two strikes uh that first one's gonna hit i guess first one's a hit second one's a miss um so you're going to take 1d6 plus two uh seven points of damage I'm using my reaction to reduce the damage by 3d6. Okay. Roll 3d6. While you're doing that, um, Rufus is trying to book it with um, with his with the rest of them. He's not disengaged, so he does take an attack of opportunity. Gets hit. Take seven more. Rufus looks like he's about dead. You take zero damage, uh, Carrick. Sweet. As, Thank you. As uh, just some ghosts fly in front of you and and take everything. That brings it to Felix's turn. This guy right here in front of Merith is uh, that Saxon, right? Yes. Right. Um, I think I'm gonna like I'm gonna make my way over. I don't want to go past this dude, so I'm gonna just make my way up to this table from here. Okay. Um, make an acrobatics check to jump over the tables. Uh, okay. You're good. Okay. Um, and I am just, I am going to cast Mind Spike on uh, 
Saxon. Okay. Uh, what is that? Uh, he needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. That's uh, going to be a... Uh, it's going to be a 10. No, you're right. My spell casting is... Um, spell save is 13, so it's not going to do it. It's going to take 3d8 damage. Okay. Uh, so 12 damage. Ooh. And I think, like, just like flavor wise, can I say, like, in his brain, it says, you don't fuck with my family <laughs> type shit? Um, like, it's psychic damage. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, that's 12, 12 damage, and then he cannot essentially escape me because I will know where he is as long as he's on this plane of existence. As long as he exists on this plane. Until the spell ends, which is, I guess it's concentration up to an hour, so it's a concentration spell. Mm -hmm. Which is not great, but is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, anything else? Bonus action or anything? Nope. Okay. Uh, next up is this other thug, who is going to go around and push the thug with the gun off the balcony. Successfully does it. This about this guy falls to the ground prone, takes eight points of damage, and then he's going to come and try to do the same thing to the other person. This one doesn't though, um, and is like kind of like backs them off with their gun. Um. That brings it to Saxon's turn. And he's like, he's like, funny you should say that. They're just out back. To you, uh, Felix. Um, and he is going to, what does Saxon do? Saxon doesn't do much. Um, he's going to, uh, I think he's actually just gonna take and start pulling uh, Merith with him and start start running out. He's like, "I'll get the boss out, guys. You go." So they go, they start going out the out the hallway. Here, right here. Okay. Um, well, he'll dash too, so actually they can get a bit further. Okay. Um, next up is you, Carrick. Oh, he I'm gonna cast uh, Melf's Minute Meteors. Uh, huh? Minute Meteors? Minute meteors? Sure. Or Minute Meteors. Don't know. Minute works too. Yep. <laughs> um so okay, I see. So that just how much did that roll just now? So um anyway, I'm going to do that. So I have six meteors above my head. I can use up to two of them this round. I'm gonna put one here. They have a five foot range, so it should get both of them. And then I'm gonna put another one uh here or no i'm gonna put the other one over here uh right there between all these three dudes okay um so dc 17 yeah dc 17 and looks like 2d6 Six damage yeah shouldn't i also get because i'm level 10 shouldn't i also add my intelligence modifier to it isn't that just for cantrips uh, it says any, wiz any wizard evocation spell. Okay, yeah, then, so that would be plus... Plus four. Yeah, plus four, so ten damage. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, turf got a fourteen. Turf, what is your... 
What's your dexterity, sir? Uh, nope. Okay. So everyone fails except for Guile. So everyone takes 10 damage. Um, Rufus falls to the ground and is burning. <laughs> nice. So for all intents and purposes, he's not dead, but he will he is dying. So I will say that in this in this battle, since it's not just against you know monsters or that, everyone um um is capable of probably being revived. Good. Good. Okay. That brings it to the next thug's turn. Or anything else I should say? Uh no. Okay. This guy's gonna turn around, fight his friend, try to hit him twice. Um, hits him once. So that's easy enough. Um let's see. Okay. Uh next thug is uh the protector thug. He's going to come around. And hit this guy two times. Misses both times. The, the big protector of the gentleman just sucks. Uh, that brings it to your turn, Thel. Okay. I would say from seeing all this, since all the thugs have gone, you at this point would know that the, all the red dot ones are bad guys. Okay. Before you wouldn't have, but... And Saxon is the brown-haired guy closest to that sewer door? No, that is Turf. Saxon ran out through the sewer door. Okay, so Saxon's out and Turf's right there. Okay. And if I did a misty step, does that incur attack of opportunity, or because I just sort of disappear, it doesn't? No, nope, right? you would not. Okay, I'm gonna misty step over to here. Okay, and then I guess I'll swing it turf. Swing and turf. Okay, I'm gonna take your swing. Trying to hit an 18. Of course it hits. Uh, so 11 points of damage. Turf is only about uh, three feet tall. Um, so this sword comes down on him and uh, like nearly knocks him to the ground. All right. I will hit him again. <laughs> ah. 15 does not hit. He's able to, like, roll over his shield up as he's, like, on the ground. So it just, like, almost pushes him into the ground, but not enough to hurt him. Okay. Anything else? I think that's pretty much your turn. Yeah, that's everything. Yep. Merith is doing stuff that you guys can't see. Um, Guile, um, seeing what just happened to Turf, is going to start uh, booking it. Uh, I guess before they book it, they're going to um, that's not who I want. I want this person. Uh, they're going to cast Hypnotic Pattern at you. Um, so make a DC 16 save. Uh, fell. Uh, dexterity, you said, or which one? Well, I guess it's a 30 foot cube. It actually will affect you as well. Um, wisdom. wisdom. Okay. No, it's, yeah, it's Felix. Wisdom, sorry. Um, Felix as well. Felix as well. 
Uh, mm, you do get a plus it. three to yours, Felix. So, because you are in um, the aura. The wisdom save? Yeah. Uh, oh, God. So, plus <laughs> you guys eight. both immediately see just these weird patterns of um, almost like hellish fire that are in front of you and you are and you are considered incapacitated um and after that happens Damn. they're going to start running down the the hallway as well Um, Ferris is going to take their two attacks on you, Christopher, because they are kind of a one-trick pony. Uh, neither of those are, nope, one of them might. Uh, 18 will hit. Take nine points of damage reduced to four as the sword comes back across you. And... Now at this point, um, you see like just a smile on Ferris's face. It's like it's been a while since I got to fight something fun. Now it's your turn, Christopher. I'm gonna take a bonus action to just kind of like scratch it like it's a mosquito bite, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then smash uh, reckless smash with a fireball. Okay. <clears throat> Um, hold up, actually. Oh, no, she's still up after that. <laughs> um, you know, I was going to say that people are going to be left alive. <laughs> she's not left alive. <laughs> you pulp her. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 29 damage. Yeah, you, you pulp her. Um, she is dead on the ground, completely splattered. It's... And you, you hear Turf go, oh, fuck. Yeah, you death metal son of a bitch. Or she had, she had of seven bitch. HP. Daughter now. of a bitch, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then can I just use whatever action I have to keep running over? Or... Uh, yeah, you still have your full movement. I'll do attack of opportunity if I try and get in the hall or whatever. Yes, you will take you will take an attack of opportunity. That's fine. I'm just going to go after everybody. Um, what do I have? 40? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I can get into here. Nope, stop. Okay. I'll run in here to the sewers if I need to take an attack. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, you will take, or no, you technically haven't moved out of his range. So you're good. That will make it Turf's turn, though. Turf doesn't know what the hell to do right now. Um... I think after just watching Ferris die like that, Turf is Turf's is gonna throw down their their weapon, or they're gonna make a wisdom save. Five nil eight is like just throws down his shield and weapons. Says, "Fuck this! I don't like Saxon that much," <laughs> and just like lays there on the ground, prone. <laughs> Hoping for hoping for some um, leniency. Um, that brings it to these next three thugs. Um, he's gonna come around, take two shots at you. Hit, hey, miss, and then he does 
eight points of damage to you, uh, Carrot. Okay. Um, these guys are just duking it out over, over here. Is this. Um. One more, two more attacks on you, Carrick. Can't hit the broad side of the barn. Uh, he is dead. Felix, it is your turn. You are incapacitated. Go ahead and make another wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. Plus three still. Um, yeah. So that's 12? Nope. Doesn't save. So I can't do anything? Uh, your speed is zero. Creature's incapacitated. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, next thug's turn. Um, is going to just attack these. Thugs are just duking it out all around. Um, Saxon is doing some things behind the screen. You get to there, but that's it. Carrick, your turn. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I want to cast Gravity Sinkhole. Oh, Lord. Right. Uh, there. Um, so it should affect all the red grunts. Basically, everybody on the main floor. Yep. Um, and then I'll sculpt it around, uh, Felix and, um, Belle. And I will just say that the bartender has run away. Okay. He's just like, ah, oh, fuck another day. Yeah. <laughs> you would have to sculpt it around yourself as well. <laughs> another day, That's another fine. gravity I, sinkhole. I can do that, yeah. Another day, another gravity sinkhole. Yeah. Okay, so I can sculpt it around three people, so that's fine. Okay. So, yeah, so it's a... Uh, I guess would it still just be DC 17, my normal spell save DC? Yeah. Just roll the damage, because um, if it's over a certain amount, nothing will survive this, even if they save. <laughs> so 32, a minimum of 16 damage. I need to roll for two of them. Uh, what type of save is it? Uh, it's a constitution save. Okay, that's and a if 16. they, and if they fail, it also pulls them to the point of, yep. like, the center of the circle. Well, congratulations. This person, this person, this person, this person. I'm gonna say this body as well. Um... They are all scrunched in their armor. It completely, like, inverts inside of them and just squishes them to a point where um, they, they're they squished. It is not a good sight. So they're all dead? They are all dead. Cool. So as a bonus action, I'm going to send uh, a fireball at the dude up on the balcony. Can I see him? Bonus action? How are you, cast How are you doing that? Uh, Melps Minute Meteors. Oh, can... okay, that type of fireball. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah, you yeah. meant, like, an actual fireball. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the ones above my head from the last round. Yep. Okay, yeah, send one up there. It, is it gonna hit both of them? Uh, it is. Since it's a bonus action, do I have any opportunity to sculpt it around the other dude? I would say you'd be able to sculpt it. Okay, then I would like to. Okay. <laughs> So it's 10 plus 4, so it should be 14 on a fail. Okay, that guy's barely hanging on. Now I'm done. Um, now everyone knows, oh, now the other, that thug who just saw that fireball explode in front of him is going to attack the guy. Um, hits both times. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Kills the guy. After the fire explodes, you just see the mace come down and just 
bash his head in. Or it's not even the mace, it's the back of the gun. So that guy um, is gone. The next thug is going to go back around and protect this kind of body in front. There is there is actually no more danger in this room. Carrick, <laughs> Carrick single-handedly <laughs> wipes the room. Um, however, Fel, that is your turn. Make a wisdom saving throw. I am incapacitated, aren't I? What? Yeah, but make a wisdom saving throw to see if you shake it. Oh, interesting. The way that it's worded, I thought the only the only ways you could get is if you get hit or someone shakes you out of it. It doesn't say roll again. Oh, you're right. I thought there was a continual save. Okay. Never mind. You're incapacitated. Seeing these weird flames all around you. Merith is going to do something. Doesn't work. Guile is going to continue running. Bitches. Um, Ferris is dead as disco. Christopher, you're up. Um. Okay, so I need to shake people out of it. Um, I'm making an attack throw, an attack roll with a root vegetable to fell. Okay. I'm trying to just clonk him in the head with a root vegetable. Okay. Roll an attack roll. Uh, that uh, hits. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Felix too. Uh, so that's that was my root vegetable. What else do I got? A bar of soup. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> bar of soup. It's it's his feet. <laughs> Well, then, um, okay. it's, oh no, a bar of soap does exactly what a bar of soap would. It slips out of your hand. <laughs> all right, so then I'm using all my movement, just going after. Oh, what the shit is this? <laughs> As you come around the corner, there is someone there with a prepared action to, um, to, uh, attack you. Using a light crossbow, it takes two shots at you. Uh, one is a 12, which won't hit. The other one is a 20, which will um, make it make a constitution save. All right, that's a good one. Um, you save from that, but you do still take twenty points of poison damage reduced in half to ten as this crossbow bolt sticks into your side and like you just feel like poison is like pulls through you as like the wound almost immediately festers. Alright, and I can get the rest of my movement right up here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh that was Christopher's turn. Turf is dead. Uh for all intents and purposes, thugs are all gone. They're not gonna be taking any actions. They're just gonna be protecting their um boss. Um Felix, that's you. You're incapacitated. Never mind. I am sorry. Uh, that's Saxon's turn. He's can, I going still, to... can I still roll a, a wisdom? No, it's we. I did that wrong. It's you have to have someone oh. shake you out of it. Oh, okay. Cool. Or blast him in, or break the person's concentration. Um. 
That's a 17. Saxon is successful. Okay, so that's that. Carrick, it is your turn. I'll be right back. Uh, I run up and I kick Felix. Yeah, you can just use an action to jostle him out of it. Deal. Okay. You can kick me. It's that's cool. Oh, I, uh, I mean, when that I'll... root vegetable fell. You take one damage. <laughs> uh, and then I use the the rest of my movement to get as far as I can, which I think is like right there. Yeah. Nope, you don't. So, Carrick, you did your turn. You shook them away. Well, that's your turn then. DJ, are you with us? I am. Um, I am going to... I just don't know how far I have to go here. Use an object... I'm going to cast haste on yourself and myself. So double my speed. Okay. You move 60. I feel like this is the most spells Bell has used in one session ever. <laughs> Keep clicking that door <laughs> instead of grabbing myself. Is a person? Yes, that's a person. Yeah, that is the enemy that just attacked Christopher. If you move past him, you will get an attack of opportunity. Yeah, so I will... Oops, I zoomed to it too far. Now, where am I? Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll just attack this guy. Uh, it was an action to cast haste. It was an action. You are correct. Yeah. Do I have any bonus actions? He's, he's he doesn't do much. He's got a stupid little crossbow. <laughs> a crossbow that did twenty-seven damage to you. What was that like ten or something? Oh, it was halved, but yeah. All right. Oh, well, here I am. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that makes it Merith's turn. Merith is doing Merith things. Okay, that's Guile's turn. Guile is going to, um, seeing you with that, he's going to just start booking it. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
I was going to do something here. Okay. Stop right there. Okay. Christopher, that's your turn. Smash. Reckless. Oh, shoot. I should have, probably should have added this person to the initial order. 10 plus threes. Um, that, oh, that does hit. Uh, yeah, those both hit. Uh, this thing is pretty dodgy, and it's just a, it's just a person just like think of like your classic looking assassin, <laughs> like face covered, yes. no. short sword, weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a weird. It's like a half wolf purple person. <laughs> um, but how much damage is that total? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21 plus 12 is 33. Okay. Um, okay, that is then the assassin's turn. He's going to take one attack on you, Christopher. That's a 14 plus um 14 plus 6 is 20, so that hits. Uh, do another constitution saving throw. That does not save this time. Uh, that is... Twenty-one plus three. Twenty-four points of damage to you. Um, no, it'd be twenty points of damage because part of it's halved. As the same poison now is in the other shoulder, but then it'll take its other attack on you, Thel. That's not going to hit you at all. It's a nine. <laughs> I use my reaction to attack on something within five feet of me. Oh, shoot. Sentinel. Okay, go ahead. All right. Yep, that hits. <laughs> you see, it's like it's like trying to be its cool, like, stab and, like, reach around and stab the other person, but you take that second to uh, attack, which does 15, 21, 24 damage. Okay. Felix, that's you. Still? It's still hard? Yes. Uh, man, it just doesn't seem like it's going to be worth it. <laughs> I can't. You can move 90 feet. I know. I know. I'm going to go ahead and, and move. So let's see. This from here to here is 20. So let's do that through the door. All right. Plus. Here's another 20, so that's going to be 21. Um, Jesus. Are they straight? Who's that? Who's that clown? Where's he in there? Um, I guess I can go another 50 feet. Yep. Yeah, I guess I will. I'll take the attack of opportunity, I guess, from this dude. Okay. Here, too, and I'll get to here. It's a seven plus six. Thirteen. Thirteen. It's not going to hit. Um, Can you see. What What can you see? I can see. Uh, it's Guile. Okay, you can't see down the other hallway. I cannot see down the other hallway. Make a perception check. <laughs> yeah, your adrenaline and blood is pounding in your ears right now. You can't hear anything. Okay. That brings it to Saxon's turn. 
who is going to turn around and see you, flip you off, and keep running. Okay, and then he's going to take an action to do something. That works. Okay. That brings it to Carrick. It's your turn. You're muted. You're muted. Dash action. Dash. So, yeah, go ahead and move 60 feet. Uh, 10, <clears throat> 10, 20, 25, 30, 35. Um, oh. Um... Okay. Uh, what is this? I'm like, oh, it's because there's a, a locked door there. I keep trying to not click. The door's gone. Oh. <laughs> uh, every single person, I think, ran into the same issue. Oh, that's really funny. Okay. Oh, so there's another hallway to my left. Yeah, it, but it's behind a locked door, though. Okay, okay. 35... Uh, 40, um, I don't know. You don't have to worry about attack of opportunity. I don't have to worry about attack of opportunity? Nope, it's one's already been taken. Okay. I mean, but, yeah, okay. 35, 45, 50, 55. Now one more forward, I think. 60. Okay. Um, and as I'm running away, I'm going to use a bonus action and let one of my little minute meteors go with this dude behind me. Okay. Sculpted around the other guys. Okay. So, plus four, that's 11. Okay. Uh, he rolled a natural one. But he does have evasion. I'll say he says it's a natural one. He doesn't get his evasion, so he does take 11 damage. This thing, this guy is not looking good. Uh, that brings it to you, Thel. You are hasted. Uh, yeah, I stabbed this guy. <laughs> okay. He's very dead. <laughs> he is you ram it through his chest it electrifies his insides scalds him and drops him okay uh and then i you'll have to fe like f felix which way which way which way left uh, to, to the left uh the right to the right okay 40 to there And I run up to there. Okay. So um, you take your next attack. And I, yeah, if I can still use it. Yep. Yep. Uh, 14 does 14 hit Guile. I think it does. Smite him so that he can't get, get anything on us again. <laughs> that motherfucker. Two rounds of doing nothing. Yep. Brutal. Oh, yeah, you can internet. smite him if you want to. Waiting for his character sheet to load. If it hits. I'm almost positive it hits. But the character sheet's not loading. I was, I'm just going to call... It. Nope, it does hit. AC 13. <laughs> disintegrated <laughs> you almost didn't need to use the smite because they only have 25 hit points oh if i had hit for one more i would have just killed him <laughs> outright <I know. laughs> so it's okay slicing into somebody and then the radiant damage exploding <laughs> them from the inside it's kind of cool uh, a hasted fell is terrifying. <laughs> 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 uh, 
You can't run. <laughs> okay, um, don't you look at your abilities because I think after you kill something, you can continue moving. Uh, no, it's not a kill. It's if somebody tries to disengage from me, basically, oh. I have Relentless Avenger. So when I hit a creature with an opportunity attack, so if somebody's engaged and they try to run, uh, I then can I can do an attack of opportunity and immediately move half my speed after that. <laughs> so a hasted, a hasted Relentless Avenger would be terrifying <laughs> because it's my full movement after an so attack of opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I was real excited about that one after that one guy that ran away from us like a while ago that got away through the smokes. So I was like, man, if I had had this, you little bitch. <laughs> okay, Marith is doing his stuff. Guile is very dead. Guile got one shotted. Deservedly so. He incapacitated us both. <laughs> in in their defense, they're all only level five. I don't care what level they are. They deserve. They haven't to been. Die. They haven't been going adventuring and killing all this stuff. Well, he they picked this fight. I just wanted to remember that. Well, they're all <laughs> dead, but I want them to remember that the afterlife. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Christopher, you're up. Probably right, the only thing I care about is getting the last hit on on Saxon. Uh, was there someone who went left? Is that what I saw? I can't see past left, so oh. nobody like Scott made me roll a perception check. So maybe there's something down there, but I have no clue. I think that's where Merrick went. Um, you can go <laughs> see. Twenty. I got forty. Two, ten, twenty, thirty. Okay, I can get to like where. Hmm. I think that's all I can do. You can dash and go double your speed. Oh, I can dash. Um, yeah, anyone can dash. Oh, I'm gonna you get another forty. One, two, there. <clears throat> Up here, you just see another locked door. No, no, no. no. Up. Okay. Um, Felix, that's you. Go about 15 through the door. Um, I am going to cast Lightning Lure on, what's his bucket? On Saxon. Saxon. He's got to be within 15 feet, so. What did I do? I had about 30 or 20 feet of movement to get in here, 25 or 30, so I have 10 more feet. Is that within 15? No, but it's at 20. No. You can bonus action dash. Oh, that's right. Okay, well. To move five feet I'm forward. Bonus action dash, five extra feet. I'm going to cast Lightning Lure on him. And they must take uh, DC 13. Actually, no, it's a, what's it called? They must take a strength saving throw, big cool 10 feet towards me, and then I'll take 1d8 lightning damage. That's 11. Okay, so they're going to take 1d8 lightning, and they're going to be pulled 10 feet towards me. Yeah, I pulled them, so take one, roll 1d8. Make another perception check, Felix. You hear unequivocally the um, kind of screams of your mother. Son of a bitch. Oh, shit. <laughs> Coming down from the way that you're going. 
that gives it to Saxon, who's going to attack you first. He's like, I guess it was always going to come to this, right? <laughs> that's uh, 9 plus 7, 16. Nah, that's going to hit. Oh, that hits? Oh, my yeah. lord. 16 is my AC. Um, 1d8 plus 4. 8 plus 4, 12 points of damage. Is he, like, is lured up to you by that electricity and just, like, kind of takes the opportunity to, like, duck down and ram his uh, rapier up into you? He's then going to... I'm going to like... Hellish Rebuke. Okay. Uh, dexterity save. Oh, my lord. That's an... Uh... Oh, that's still an 11. I still don't think that works. No. So it's going to be 2d10 fire damage. That's 12 fire damage. Okay. You see his entire like left face, like his eyes scalded shut. And you said it was 12 damage against me? Uh, Yes. Okay. Uh, but he is going to disengage and start running. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Brings it to your turn, Carrot. All right, I'm running. Um, well, I guess I'm dashing. So, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. I guess that's it. I guess that's all I can do. That was that was sixty feet. I still don't see anybody, but just yep. keep on running. Bell, it's your turn. Alrighty. Are you able to get there? Yeah, 60. That's exactly 60. Though where you are right now? Yeah. Yeah, and looking through this tunnel lit up just fine. You see Saxon. You see who you have met uh, before. Felix's mom, Sheila. Uh, but you don't quite see Merith or anyone else. So, which brings it to Merith's turn. I know we're running a little late, but we're at a good stopping point, even if we don't finish this combat in a second. Uh, I could shoot my crossbow at Saxon, right? Did you dash? No, I just am hasted, so I have my oh, that's 60 right. feet. That is wild. You, you, this, this, this would be too narrow. You wouldn't be able to get by Saxon. Right, but I could shoot my crossbow at him, right? Yeah, you can shoot the crossbow at him. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's amazing how good of a shot it is, but the bolt just like was like if you were wondering like was there even a tip on that bolt? <laughs> it's just like a piece of wood that just jabbed into him. He's just like oh. ah, that kind of <laughs> That tickled. That's going to bruise a little. Christopher, you're up. Yes, I'm just doing... Uh, catching up with everybody. Going the wrong way. <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 40. And then, yep, we got some... Where is everybody? 50. Oh, we went that way. 16? You can get right next to Felix. Where's Felix? Oh, around the corner. Yeah. I forget you guys can't see everything. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where, where am I? Right here? Uh, yeah, if you go around that corner. Okay, I can get to here. Oh, there we go. You can get down next to the pink dude. Oh, okay. It is kind of interesting just how disorienting the 
fog of war can be. Because I still have this other thing, this other like map underneath that like was thrown. Oh, me. it won't go away. Okay. It looks like a whole like under corridor. Like I could have gone south, and then there's a whole like cavern or something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's like the edge of the map has this little texture. So it looks. I think it's just the outside of the map. Maybe. Felix, you're up. I'm gonna engage with this motherfucker. I'm gonna take out my uh, dagger and please God fucking hit 16. 16. His armor class is 15. It's only six damage. So you do. You ram it up into his ribs, kind of going tit for tat on this one. Um. And is that your turn? I think that's all you can do. Yeah, I think that's all I can do. So Actually, he will. Hmm. Hmm. How tall is the? Would you say the uh, ceiling is here? Probably eight feet. Uh, you know what? I don't think I'll be able to do that, actually. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I imagine that would be a, an action that I am will be able to do that. Tell you what I want to do, which is jump up and activate my boots <laughs> and jump <laughs> over him to the end of the hallway. <laughs> Make him take an additional 2d8 lightning damage, but I don't think I can do that. I think that's probably an action. Um, what are the boots? The Storm Rider boots. Yeah, but... Once per day, 90 feet of flight for one round. Opportunity attacks against the wearer made with disadvantage. Deals 2d8 points of lightning damage to mm. those that the wearer passes. Let's see. Um... That's in a human. No, he's a halfling. Oh, so I could potentially jump over him. Like he's not that tall. Mm hmm. One second. There is nothing saying that it's an action. just movement it's just movement it's just part of your it's just part of your movement i think it's a free action to activate these things fuck yeah uh, then i'm doing it i want to okay. jump over this guy activate these boots so that i can get past him i would here. say you have all still already used four um for how much movement have you already used because it did increase your movement to 90 but i'm not gonna uh, I used, I think it was 25 to get in the door, and, or, and like 30 to, it was like 30 to get to him. 30 to get to him, so you have another 60 feet of movement. Um, you fly over him, he needs to make a dexterity saving throw? Uh, it just says, uh, well, all I have is 2d8 points of lightning damage to those that I pass. It doesn't say anything about it. I don't have anything written down for a Okay, save. let me make sure. But double check, because uh, I don't want... I mean, I would love to do just two d eight d eight damage, but you know, let's try. I'll try and be fair. Nope, it just does it. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> These boots are broken, guys. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Ten points of damage. Um, how do you want uh, Saxon to die? I would love nothing more than for me to jump over him. And as I pass over his head, the boots are activated and just lightning straight into this motherfucker's head. <laughs> yep, you like put your boot on his head as you're jumping over him and you just watch um, 
I guess it would be Thel watches as the electricity goes through. Both of his eyes pop and he melts like the guy in Indiana Jones. Saxon Thorn Gage is no more. That is so incredibly satisfying. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, at that point, it is Carrick's turn. Oh, good. More running. All righty. Um, so that's 35. Oh, wait. 35. So that means I can go uh, 40, 45, 50, 55. Basically, I can get to Saxon is what... Yeah. Right. You step over the pile of poop that is this guy. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well. Um, for all intents and purposes, actually, I am going to move you guys to where you would end up. Um, we're essentially out of initiative for a second. You are come to the end of this pier of this underground river and just barely going off into the darkness you can see a small boat holding three figures head down the river as Merit is getting away with uh, <laughs> Felix's parents so that's probably a good place to stop. These boots were made for jumping on the canoe. Down the <laughs> <laughs> How many hit um, points did he have left before I did the... Nine. Nine? Oh, okay. Cool. So it's uh, not been very long time-wise since we started this battle, right? Uh, it's been about a minute. A minute? Okay. <laughs> so I still have two meteors left. <laughs> um, I Yeah, it's... They are rapidly moving away. I just put them there so you'd be able to see them. They're probably... Well, if you get up here, are probably further away. Okay. More so, than 120 feet away? I Would you be able to see them 120 feet away? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> It's it's it gets dark. There's no more light going okay. down that way, so okay. you have to. It'd, it'd be a definite maybe. Okay, so how about you know we're gonna scroll of our carry and fly our way across this river. <laughs> Just aim it off the. Where wall. is where is our boat? Where is the bag it? is oh, holding? Yeah, we got a boat. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be a boat chase. Yeah. <laughs> so. Mm. I oh, didn't good have job, that on my bingo card. What? I didn't have us using the boat anytime soon and on my bingo card. I thought about when I was building this, making this whole encounter, I came up <laughs> with that part of it about having to go down this river because I re-listened to an episode of The Mighty Nine and I forgot that this river existed. I'm like, ooh, a reason for them to use boat. That's awesome. That'll be fun. I, as I was stunned for two turns, I was just thinking, if I could just get haste off, I can run these bitches down. <laughs> but just barely stalled long enough. Just, yeah, it, just it pays, far enough away. It pays to be fast sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it truly was. I was thinking, like, they aren't going to get to the boat. They aren't going to get to the boat. It was, it was, you guys were a turn off. Yeah. A turn off. Well, because they got stuck at one of the doors because they had to pick it. My my favorite. So they would have already been long gone. Saxon would still be alive, but they could not pick one of the doors. <laughs> one of my favorite things about this whole idea is that the gentleman, Angela, which is hilarious, by the way, <laughs> uh, Angela is just sitting there just watching, which <laughs> is very much like Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, very... <laughs> situation. It's so funny. It's just like the thought is just so funny to me. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I that's a hard one because there was a ton of people. 
but like I didn't want to make them too strong because then it's just like, hey, they're just fighting. They're just fighting to fight. <laughs> the whole point really was just have it be enough of a distraction for people to get away. So it worked. Well, just good. enough. Good job. And um, Carrick took the decision from Thel's hands because he probably he would have been like, ah, turf, I'm gonna but then he turf surrendered, so unarmed murder again <laughs> would not have been good. And he just got crushed in front. Well, I was like zoned out on psychedelics, so I didn't actually see it. <laughs> yeah, the that center table is a rough town. Gooey. <laughs> it's like, because you think like if it's pulling you in, 